dedication to my wife with a copy of my poems from the poems of oscar wilde by oscar wilde read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter i can write no stately proem as the prelude to my lay from a poet to a poem i would dare to say for if of these fallen petals one to you seem fair love will waft it till it settles on your hair and when wind and winter harden all the loveless land it will whisper of the garden you will understand oscar wilde end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ravenna, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter and Leanne. One. A year ago I breathed the Italian air, and yet methinks this northern spring is fair. These fields made golden with the flower of March, the throstle singing on the feathered larch the cawing rooks the wood doves fluttering by the little clouds that race across the sky and fair the violet's gentle drooping head the primrose pale for love uncomforted the rose that burgeons on the climbing briar the crocus bed that seems a moon of fire round girdled with a purple marriage ring and all the flowers of our english spring fawn snowdrops and the bright star daffodil up starts the lark beside the murmuring mill, And breaks the gossamer threads of early dew, And down the river, like a flame of blue, Keen as an arrow flies the water-king, While the brown linnets in the greenwood sing. A year ago! It seems a little time since last I saw that lordly southern clime, Where flower and fruit to purple radiance blow, And like bright lamps the fabled apples glow. Full spring it was, and by rich flowering vines, Dark olive groves and noble forest pines, I rode at will. The moist glad air was sweet, The white road rang beneath my horse's feet, And musing on Ravenna's ancient name, I watched the day till, marked with wounds of flame, The turquoise sky to burnished gold was turned. Oh, how my heart with boyish passion burned, When far away across the sedge and mere I saw that holy city rising clear, Crowned with her crown of towers. On and on I galloped, racing with the setting sun, And ere the crimson afterglow was past, I stood within Ravenna's walls at last. 2. How strangely still! No sound of life or joy startles the air, no laughing shepherd boy pipes on his reed, nor ever through the day comes the glad sound of children at their play. O oh, sad and sweet and silent, surely here a man might dwell apart from troublous fear, watching the tide of seasons as they flow, from amorous spring to winter's rain and snow and have no thought of sorrow here indeed are lethe's waters and that fatal weed which makes a man forget his fatherland ay amid lotus meadows dost thou stand like proserpine with poppy-laden head guarding the holy ashes of the dead for though thy brood of warrior sons hath ceased thy noble dead are with thee they at least are faithful to thy honor guard them well o childless city for a mighty spell to wake men's heart to dreams of things sublime are the lone tombs where rest the great of time three yon lonely pillar rising on the plain marks where the bravest knight of france was slain the prince of chivalry the lord of war gaston de foix for some untimely star led him against thy city and he fell as for some forced lion fighting well taken from life while life and love were new he lies beneath god's seamless veil of blue 
tall lance-like wreaths wave sadly over his head and oleanders bloom to deeper red where his bright youth flowed crimson on the ground look farther north unto that broken mound there prisoned now within a lordly tomb raised by a daughter's hand in lonely gloom huge-limbed theodoric the gothic king sleeps after all his weary conquering time hath not spared his ruin wind and rain have broken down his stronghold and again we see that death is mighty lord of all and king and clown to ashen dust must fall mighty indeed their glory yet to me barbaric king or knight of chivalry or the great queen herself were poor and vain beside the grave where dante rests from pain his gilded shrine lies open to the air and cunning sculptor's hands have carven there the calm white brow as calm as earliest morn the eyes that flashed with passionate love and scorn the lips that sang of heaven and of hell the almond face which giotto drew so well the weary face of dante to this day here in his place of resting far away from arnold's yellow waters rushing down through the wide bridges of that fairy town where the tall tower of giotto seems to rise a marble lily under sapphire skies alas my dante thou hast known the pain of meaner lives the exile's galling chain how steep the stairs within king's houses are and all the petty miseries which mar man's nobler nature with a sense of wrong yet this dull world is grateful for thy song our nations do thee homage even she the cruel queen of wine-clad tuscany who bound with crown of thorns thy living brow hath decked thy empty tomb with laurels now and begs in vain the ashes of her son o mightiest exile all thy grief is done thy soul walks now beside thy beatrice ravenna guards thy ashes sleep in peace four how lone this palace is how gray the walls no minstrel now wakes echoes in these halls the broken chain lies rusting on the door and noisome weeds have split the marble floor here lurks the snake and here the lizards run by the stone lines blinking in the sun byron dwelt here in love and revelry for two long years a second anthony who of the world another actium made yet suffer not his royal soul to fade or lyre to break or lance to grow less keen neath any wiles of an egyptian queen for from the east there came a mighty cry and grief stood up to fight for liberty and called him from ravenna never knight rode forth more nobly to wild scenes of fight none fell more bravely on ensanguined field borne like a spartan back upon his shield o hellas hellas in thine hour of pride thy day of might remember him who died to wrest from off thy limbs a trammelling chain o salamis o lone Plataean plain o tossing waves of wild euboean sea o wind-swept heights of lone thermopylae he loved you well i not alone in word who freely gave to thee his lyre and sword like aeschylus at well-fought marathon and england too shall glory in her son her warrior poet first in song and fight no longer now shall Salander's venom spite crawl like a snake across his perfect name or mar the lordly scutcheon of his fame for as the olive garland of the race which lights with joy each eager runner's face as the red cross which saveth men in war as a flame-bearded beacon seen from far by mariners upon a storm-tossed sea such was his love for greece and liberty byron thy crowns are ever fresh and green red leaves of rose from sapphic mytilene shall bind thy brows 
the myrtle blooms for thee in hidden glades by lonely castle the laurels wait thy coming all are thine and around thy head one perfect wreath will twine five the pine tops rocked before the evening breeze with the hoarse murmur of the wintry seas and the tall stems were streaked with amber bright i wandered through the wood in wild delight some startled bird with fluttering wings and fleet made snow of all the blossoms at my feet like silver crowns the pale narcissi lay and small birds sang on every twining spray o waving trees o forest liberty within your haunts at least a man is free and half forgets the weary world of strife the blood flows hotter and a sense of life wakes in the quickening veins while once again the woods are filled with gods we fancied slain long time i watched and surely hoped to see some gold foot pan make merry minstrelsy amid the reeds some startled dryad maid in girlish flight were lurking in the glade the soft brown limbs the wanton treacherous face of woodland god queen diane in the chase white-limbed and terrible with look of pride and leash of boar hounds leaping at her side or hylas mirrored in the perfect stream o idle heart o fond hellenic dream ere long with melancholy rise and swell the evening chimes the coven's vesper bell struck on my ears amid the amorous flowers alas alas these sweet and honeyed hours had wound my heart like some encroaching sea and drowned all thoughts of black gethsemane six o oh, lone ravenna many a tale is told of thy great glories in the days of old two thousand years have passed since thou didst see caesar ride forth to royal victory mighty thy name when rome's lean eagles flew from britain's isles to far euphrates blue and of the peoples thou wast noble queen till in thy streets the goth and hun were seen discrowned by man deserted by the sea thou sleepest rocked in lonely misery no longer now upon thy swelling tide pine forest like thy myriad galleys ride for where the brass-beaked ships were wont to float the weary shepherd pipes his mournful note and the white sheep are free to come and go where adria's purple waters used to flow o oh, fair o oh, sad o oh, queen uncomforted in ruined loveliness thou liest dead alone of all thy sisters for at last italia's royal warrior hath passed rome's lordliest entrance and hath worn his crown in the high temples of the eternal town the palatine hath welcomed back her king and with his name the seven mountains ring and naples hath outlived her dream of pain and mocks her tyrant venice lives again new risen from the waters and the cry of light and truth of love and liberty is heard in lordly genoa and where the marble spires of milan wound the air rings from the alps to the sicilian shore and dante's dream is now a dream no more but thou ravenna better loved than all thy ruined palaces are but a pall that hides thy fallen greatness and thy name burns like a grey and flickering candle flame beneath the noonday splendour of the sun of new italia for the night is done the night of dark oppression and the day hath dawned in passionate splendour far away the austrian hounds are hunted from the land beyond those ice-crowned citadels which stand girdling the plain of royal lombardy from the far west unto the eastern sea i know indeed that sons of thine have died in lisa's waters by the mountainside of espromonte on novara's plain nor have thy children died for thee in vain and yet methinks thou hast not drunk this wine from grapes new crushed of liberty divine thou hast not followed that immortal star which leads the people forth to deeds of war weary of life thou liest in silent sleep 
as one who marks the lengthening shadows creep careless of all the hurrying hours that run mourning some day of glory for the sun of freedom hath not shewn to thee his face and thou hast caught no flambeau in the race yet wake not from thy slumbers rest thee well amidst thy fields of amber asphodel thy lily-sprinkled meadows rest thee there to mock all human greatness who would dare to vent the paltry sorrows of his life before thy ruins or to praise the strife of king's ambition and the barren pride of warring nations wert not thou the pride of the wild lord of adria's stormy sea the queen of double empires and to thee were not the nations given us thy prey and now thy gates lie open night and day the grass grows green on every tower and hall the ghastly fig hath cleft thy bastioned wall and where thy mailed warriors stood at rest the midnight owl hath made her secret nest o fallen fallen from thy high estate o city trammelled in the toils of fate doth not remain of all thy glorious days but a dull shield a crown of withered bays yet who beneath this night of wars and fears from tranquil tower can watch the coming years who can foretell what joys the day shall bring or why before the dawn the linnets sing thou even thou mayst wake as wakes the rose to crimson splendor from its grave of snows as the rich cornfields rise to red and gold from these brown lands now stiff with winter's cold as from the storm-rack comes a perfect star o oh, much-loved city i have wandered far from the wave-circled islands of my home have seen the gloomy mystery of the dome rise slowly from the drear campagna's way clothed in the royal purple of the day I, from the city of the violet crown, have watched the sun by Corinth's hill go down, and marked the myriad laughter of the sea from starlit hills of flower-starred Arcady. Yet back to thee returns my perfect love, as to its forest nest the evening dove. O poet city, one who scarce has seen some twenty summers cast their doublets green for autumn's livery, would seek in vain to wake his lyre to sing a louder strain, or tell thy days of glory. Poor indeed is the low murmur of the shepherd's reed, where the loud clarion's blast should shake the sky and flame across the heavens. And to try such lofty themes were folly. Yet I know that never felt my heart a nobler glow than when I woke the silence of thy street with clamorous trampling of my horse's feet and saw the city which now I try to sing after long days of weary travelling. 7. Adio, Ravenna! But a year ago I stood and watched the crimson sunset glow from the lone chapel on thy marshy plain the sky was a shield that caught the stain of blood and battle from the dying sun and in the west the circling clouds had spun a royal robe which some great god might wear while into ocean seas of purple air sank the gold galley of the lord of light yet here the gentle stillness of the night brings back the swelling tide of memory and wakes again my passionate love for thee now is the spring of love yet soon will come on meadow and tree the summer's lordly bloom and soon the grass with brighter flowers will blow and set up lilies for some boy to mow then before long the summer's conqueror rich autumn time the season's usurer will lend his hoarded gold to all the trees and see it scattered by the spendthrift breeze and after that the winter cold and drear so runs the perfect cycle of the year and so from youth to manhood do we go and fall to weary days and locks of snow love only knows no winter never dies nor cares for frowning storms or leaden skies and mine for thee shall never pass away though my weak lips may falter in my lay adieu adieu Yon silent evening star, the night's ambassador, doth gleam afar, and bid the shepherd bring his flocks to fold, 
perchance before our inland seas of gold are garnered by the reapers into sheaves perchance before i see the autumn leaves i may behold thy city and lay down low at thy feet the poet's laurel crown adieu adieu yon silver lamp the moon which turns our midnight into perfect noon doth surely light thy towers guarding well where dante sleeps where byron loved to dwell ravenna march eighteen seventy seven Hellas from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Liam. To drift with every passion till my soul is a stringed lute on which all winds can play. Is it for this that I have given away my ancient wisdom and austere control? Methinks my life is a twice-written scroll scrawled over on some boyish holiday with idle songs for pipe and virile which do but mar the secret of the whole surely there was a time i might have trod the sunlit heights and from life's dissonance struck one clear chord to reach the ears of god is that time dead lo with a little rod i did but touch the honey of romance sonnet to liberty from the poems of oscar wilde by oscar wilde read for LibriVox.org by Lian. not that i love thy children whose dull eyes see nothing save their own unlovely woe whose minds know nothing nothing care to know but that the roar of thy democracies thy reigns of terror thy great anarchies mirror my wildest passions like the sea and give my rage a brother liberty for this sake only do thy dissonant cries delight my discreet soul else might all kings by bloody knout or treacherous cannonades rob nations of their rights inviolate and i remain unmoved and yet and yet these christs that die Ave Imperatrix from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Set in this stormy northern sea queen of these restless fields of tide England what shall men say of thee before whose seat the worlds divide the earth a brittle globe of glass lies in the hollow of thy hand and through its heart of crystal pass like shadows through a twilight land the spears of crimson suited war the long white crested waves of fight and all the deadly fires which are the torches of the lords of night the yellow leopards strained and lean the treacherous russian knows so well with gaping blackened jaws are seen leap through the hail of screaming shell the strong sea lion of england's wars hath left his sapphire cave of sea to battle with the storm that mars the star of england's chivalry the brazen-throated clarion blows across the pathon's reedy fen and the high steeps of indian's nose shake to the tread of armed men and many an afghan chief who lies beneath his cool pomegranate trees clutches his sword in fierce surmise when on the mountain side he sees the fleet-foot mari scout who comes to tell how he hath heard afar the measured roll of english drums beat at the gates of kandahar 
for southern wind and east wind meet where girt and crowned by sword and fire england with bare and bloody feet climbs the steep road of wide empire o lonely himalayan height gray pillar of the indian sky where sawst thou last in clanging fight our winged dogs of victory the almond groves of samarkand bokhara where red lilies blow and oxus by whose yellow sand the grave white turbaned merchants go and on from thence to Ispahan, the gilded garden of the sun, whence the long dusty caravan brings cedar and vermilion, and that dread city of Kabul set the mountain's scarped feet, whose marble tanks are ever full with water for the noonday heat, where through the narrow straight bazaar a little maid Circassian is led a present from the Tsar unto some old and bearded Khan. Here have our wild war eagles flown and flapped wide wings in fiery fight. But the sad dove that sits alone in England, she hath no delight. In vain the laughing girl will lean to greet her love with lovelit eyes. Down in some treacherous black ravine, clutching his flag, the dead boy lies. And many a moon and sun will see the lingering, wistful children wait to climb upon their father's knee, and in each house made desolate, pale women who have lost their lord will kiss the relics of the slain, some tarnished epaulette, some sword, poor toys to soothe such anguished pain. For not in quiet English fields are these, our brothers lain to rest, where we might deck their broken shields with all the flowers the dead love best. For some are by the Delhi walls, and many in the Afghan land, and many where the Ganges falls, through seven mouths of shifting sand. And some in Russian waters lie, and others in the seas which are the portals to the east, or by the wind-swept heights of Trafalgar. O wandering graves, O restless sleep, O silence of the sunless day, O still ravine, O stormy deep, give up your prey, give up your prey. And thou whose wounds are never healed, whose weary race is never won, O Cromwell's England, must thou yield for every inch of ground a sun? Go, crown with thorns thy gold-crowned head, change thy glad song to song of pain. Wind and wild wave have got thy dead, and will not yield them back again. Wave and wild wind and foreign shore possess the flower of English land. Lips that thy lips shall kiss no more, hands that shall never clasp thy hand. What profit now that we have bound the whole round world with nets of gold, if hidden in our heart is found the care that groweth never old? What profit that our galleys ride, pine forests like on every main, ruin and wreck are at our side, grim waters of the house of pain? Where are the brave, the strong, the fleet? Where is our English chivalry? Wild grasses are their burial sheet, and sobbing waves their threnody. O oh, loved ones lying far away, what word of love can dead lips send? O oh, wasted dust, O oh, senseless clay, is this the end? Is this the end? Peace, peace. We wrong the noble dead to vex their solemn slumber so. Though childless, and with thorn-crowned head, Up the steep road must England go. Yet when this fiery web is spun, Her watchmen shall descry from far The young republic like a To Milton, from the poems of Oscar Wilde, by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian. Milton, I think thy spirit hath passed away from these white cliffs 
and high embattled towers the scorchous fiery colored world of ours seems fallen into ashes dull and gray and the age changed unto a mimic play wherein we waste our else to crowded hours for all our pomp and pageantry and powers were but fit to delve the common clay seen this little isle on which we stand this england the sea lion of the sea by ignorant demagogues is held in fee who love her not dear god is this the land which bear a triple empire Louis Napoleon from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Eagle of Austerlitz, where were thy wings when far away upon a barbarous strand, in fight unequal, by an obscure hand, fell the last scion of thy brood of kings? poor boy thou shalt not flaunt thy cloak of red nor ride in state through paris in the van of thy returning legions but instead thy mother france free and republican shall on thy dead and crownless forehead place the better laurels of a soldier's crown that not dishonoured should thy soul go down to tell the mighty sire of thy race that france hath kissed the mouth of liberty and found it sweeter than his honeyed bees and that the giant wave democracy Sonnet on the Massacre of the Christians in Bulgaria from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Lian. Christ, dost thou live indeed, or are thy bones still straightened in their rock-hewn sepulchre? And was thy rising only dreamed by her, whose love of thee for all her sin atones? For here the air is horrid with men's groans. The priests who call upon thy name are slain. Dost thou not hear the bitter wail of pain from those whose children lie upon the stones? Come down, O son of God, incestuous gloom curtains the land, and through the starless night over thy cross a crescent moon I see. If thou in very truth didst burst the tomb, come down, O son of man, and show thy Quantum Mutata from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Lian. There was a time in Europe long ago when no man died for freedom anywhere, but England's lion leaping from its lair laid hands on the oppressor. It was so while England could a great republic show, witness the men of Piedmont, chiefest care of Cromwell, when with impotent despair the pontiff in his painted portico trembled before our stern ambassadors how comes it then that from such high estate we have thus fallen save that luxury with barren merchandise piles up the gate where noble thoughts and deeds should libertati sagra fames from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Albeit nurtured in democracy, And like him best that state republican, Where every man is king-like And no man is crowned above his fellows, Yet I see, spite of this modern fret for liberty, Better the rule of one whom all obey, than to let clamorous demagogues betray our freedom with the kiss of anarchy. 
wherefore i love them not whose hands profane plant the red flag upon the piled up street for no right cause beneath whose irrigant reign arts culture reverence honour all things fade save treason and the dagger of her Theoreticos from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter This mighty empire hath but feet of clay of all its ancient chivalry and might our little island is forsaken quite some enemy hath stolen its crown of a bay and from its hills that voice hath passed away which spake of freedom oh come out of it come out of it my soul thou art not fit for this vile traffic house where day by day wisdom and reverence are sold at mart and the rude people rage with ignorant cries against an heritage of centuries it mars my calm wherefore in dreams of art and loftiest culture i would stand apart The Garden of Eros from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Lian. It is full summer now, the heart of June. Not yet the sunburnt reapers are astir upon the upland meadow where too soon reach autumn time the season's usurer who lent his hoarded gold to all the trees and see his treasures scattered by the wild and spendthrift breeze too soon indeed yet here the daffodil that love child of the spring has lingered on to vex the rose with jealousy and still the harebell spreads her azure pavilion and like a strayed and wandering reveller abandoned of his brothers whom long since june's messenger the missile thrush has frighted from the glade one pale narcissus loiters fearfully close to a shadowy nook where half afraid of their own loveliness some violets lie that will not look the gold sun in the face for fear of too much splendor ah oh, methinks it is a place which should be trodden by persephone when wearied of the flowerless fields of dis or danced on by the lands of arcady the hidden secret of internal bliss known to the grecian here a man might find ah you and i may find it now if love and sleep be kind there are the flowers which morning heracles strewed on the tomb of hylas columbine its white doves all a flutter where the breeze kissed them too harshly the small celandine that yellow kirtled chorister of eve and lilac lady smock but let them bloom alone and leave yon spired hollyhock red crocketed to sway its silent chimes else must the bee its little bell ringer go seek instead some other pleasance the anemone that weeps at daybreak like a silly girl before her love and hardly lets the butterflies unfurl their painted wings beside it bid it pine in pale virginity the winter snow will suit it better than those lips of thine whose fires would but scorch it rather go and pluck that amorous flower which blooms alone fed by the pander wind with dust of kisses not its own the trumpet mouths of red convolvulus so dear to maidens creamy meadow sweet whiter than juno's throat and odorous as all arabia hyacinths the feet of huntress diane would be loth to mar for any dappled fawn pluck these and those fawn flowers which are fairer than what queen venus trod upon beneath the pines of ida eucharis that morning star which does not dread the sun and budding marjoram which but to kiss 
would sweeten Cytherea's lips and make Adonis jealous. These for thy head and for thy girdle take, yon curving spray of purple calamities, whose gorgeous dye outflames the Tyrian king, and fox gloves with their nodding chalices. But that one Narcissus wished a startled spring, let from her kirtle fall when first she heard in her own woods the wild tempestuous song of summer's bird ah leave it for a subtle memory of those sweet tremulous days of rain and sun when april laughed between her tears to see the early primrose with shy footsteps run from the gnarled oak tree roots to all the wold spite of its brown and trampled leaves grew bright with shimmering gold nay pluck it too it is not half so sweet as thou thyself my soul's idolatry and when thou art awearied at thy feet shall ox lips weave their brightest tapestry for thee the woodbine shall forget its pride and veil its tangled worlds and thou shalt walk on daisies pied and i will cut a reed by yonder spring and make the wood gods jealous and old pan wonder what young intruder dares to sin in these still haunts where never foot of man should tread at evening lest he chance to spy the marble limbs of artemis and all her company and i will tell thee why the jacinth wears such dread embroidery of dolorous moan and why the hapless nightingale forbears to sing her song at noon but weeps alone when the flea swallow sleeps and rich men feast and why the laurel trembles when she sees the lightning east and i will sing how sad proserpina unto a grave and gloomy lord was wed and luro the silver-breasted helena back from the lotus meadows of the dead so shalt thou see that awful loveliness for which two mighty hosts met fearfully in war's abyss and then i'll pipe to thee that grecian tale how cynthia loves the lad endymion and hidden in a grey and misty veil hies to the cliffs of latmos once the sun leaps from his ocean bed to fruitless chase of those pale flying feet which fade away in his embrace and if my lute can breathe sweet melody we may behold her face who long ago dwelt among men by the aegean sea and whose sad house with pillaged portico and friesless wall and columns toppled down looms over the ruins of that fair and violet cinctured town spirit of beauty tarry still a while they are not dead thy ancient votaries some few there are to whom thy radiant smile is better than a thousand victories though all the nobly slain of waterloo rise up in wrath against them tarry still there are a few who for thy sake would give their manhood and consecrate their being i at least have done so made thy lips my daily food and in thy temples found a goodlier feast than the starved age can give me spite of all its new-found creeds so sceptical and so dogmatical here not cephisos not ilisos flows the woods of white colonos are not here on our bleak hills the olive never blows no simple priest conducts his lowing steer up the steep marble way nor through the town do laughing maidens bear to thee the crocus flowered gown yet tarry for the boy who loved thee best whose very name should be a memory to make thee linger sleeps in silent rest beneath the roman walls a melody still mourns her sweetest lyre none can play the lute of adonai with his lips song passed away nay when kids died the muses still had left one silver voice to sing his threnody but ah too soon of it we were bereft where on that riven night and stormy sea panthea claimed her singer as her own and slew the mouth that praised her since which time we walk alone save for that fiery heart 
and morning star of re-arising england whose clear eye saw from our tottering throne and waste of war the grand greek limbs of young democracy rise mightily like hesperus and bring the great republic him at least thy love hath taught to sing and he hath been with thee at thessaly and seen white atlanta fleet of foot in passionless and fierce virginity hunting the tusked boar his honeyed lute hath pierced the cavern of the hollow hill and venus laughs to know one knee will bow before her still and he hath kissed the lips of proserpine and sung the galilean's requiem that wounded forehead dashed with blood and wine he hath discrowned the ancient gods in him have found their last most ardent worshipper and a new sign grows gray and dim before its conqueror spirit of beauty tarry with us still it is not quenched the torch of poesy the star that shook above the eastern hill holds unsailed its argent armory from all the gathering gloom and fretful fight o oh, tarry with us still for through the long and common night morris our sweet and simple chaucer's child dear heritor of spencer's tuneful reed with soft and sylvan pipe has oft beguiled the weary soul of man in troublous need and from the far and flowerless fields of eyes has brought fair flowers meet to make an earthly paradise we know them all gudrun the strongman's bride aslaug and olafson we know them all how giant grettir fought and sigurd died and what enchantment held the king in thrall when lonely bringhild wrestled with the powers that war against all passion ah how oft through summer hours long listless summer hours when the noon being enamoured of a damask rose forgets to journey westward till the moon the pale usurper of his tribute grows from a thin sickle to a silver shield and chides his loitering car how oft in some cool grassy field far from the cricket ground and noisy eight at bagley where the rustling bluebells come almost before the blackbird finds a mate and overstay the swallow and the hum of many murmuring bees flits through the leaves have i lain pouring on the dreamy tales his fancy weaves and through the unreal woes and mimic pain wept for myself and so was purified and in their simple mirth grew glad again for as i sailed upon that pictured tide the strength and splendour of the storm was mine without a storm's red ruin for the singer is divine the little laugh of water falling down is not so musical the clammy gold close hoarded in the tiny waxen town has less of sweetness in it and the old half-withered bees that waved in arcady touched by his lips break forth against the fresher harmony spirit of beauty tarry yet a while although the cheating merchants of the mart with iron rose profane our lovely isle and break on whirling wheels the limbs of art eh, though the crowded factories beget the blind worm ignorance that slays the soul o oh, tarry yet for one at least there is he bears his name from dante and seraph gabriel whose double laurels burn with deathless flame to light thy altar he too loves thee well who saw old merlin lured in vivian's snare and the white feet of angels coming down the golden stair loves thee so well that all the world for him a gorgeous colored vestiture must wear and sorrow take a purple diadem or else be no more sorrow and despair gild its own thrones and pain like adon be even in anguish beautiful such is the empery which painters hold and such the heritage this gentle solemn spirit doth possess me a better mirror of his age in all his pity love and weariness than those who can but copy common things and leave the soul unpainted with its mighty questionings 
but they are few and all romance has flown and men can prophesy about sun and lecture on his arrows how alone through a waste void the soulless atoms run how from each tree its weeping nymph has fled and that no more mid english reeds a naiad shows her head methinks these new actaeans boast too much that they have spied on beauty what if we have analyzed the rainbow robbed the moon of her most ancient chastest misery shall i the last endymion lose all hope because rude eyes peer at my mistress through a telescope what profit if the scientific age burst through our gates with all its retinue of modern miracles can it assuage one lover's breaking heart what can it do to make one life more beautiful one day more godlike in its period but now the age of clay returns in horrid cycle and the earth hath borne again a noisy progeny of ignorant titans whose ungodly birth hurls them against the august hierarchy which sat upon olympus to the dust they have appealed and to that barren arbiter they must repair for judgment let them if they can from natural warfare and insensate chance create the new ideal rule for man methinks that was not my inheritance for i was nurtured otherwise my soul passes from higher heights of life to a more supreme goal lo while we spake the earth did turn away her visage from the god and hectates boat rose silver laden till the jealous day blew all its torches out i did not note the waning hours to young endymions time's palsied fingers count in vain his rosary of suns mark how the yellow iris wearily leans back his throat as though it would be kissed by his false chamberer and the dragonfly who like a blue vein on a girl's white wrist sleeps on that snowy primrose of the night which begin to flush with crimson shame and die beneath the light come let us go against the pallid shield on the wane sky the almond blossoms gleam the corn crake nested in the unmown field answers is made across the misty stream on fitful wing the startled curlews fly and in his sedgy bed the lark for joy that day is nigh scatters the pearl dew from off the grass in tremulous ecstasy to greet the sun who soon in gilded panoply will pass forth from yon orange curtained pavilion hung in the burning east see the red rim overtops the expectant hills it is the god for love of him already the shrill lark is out of sight flooding with waves of sun the silent dell ah there is something more in that bird's flight than could be tested in a crucible but the air freshens let us go why soon the woodman will be here how we Requiescat from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Tread lightly, she is near under the snow. Speak gently, she can hear the daisies grow. All her bright golden hair tarnished with rust, she that was young and fair fallen to dust. Lily like white as snow she hardly knew she was a woman so sweetly she grew coffin board heavy stone lie on her breast i vex my heart alone she is at rest peace peace she cannot hear lyre or sonnet all my life's buried here
Sonnet on Approaching Italy from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter I reached the Alps, the soul within me burned, Italia, my Italia, at thy name, And when from out the mountain's heart I came And saw the land for which my life had yearned, I laughed as one who some great prize had earned and musing on the marvel of thy fame i watched the day till marked with wounds of flame the turquoise sky to burnished gold was turned the pine trees waved as waves a woman's hair and in the orchards every twining spray was breaking into flakes of blossoming foam but when i knew that far away at rome in evil bonds the second peter lay i wept Saminato from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Lian. See, I have climbed the mountain side up to this holy house of God, where once that angel painter trod who saw the heavens opened wide, and throned upon the crescent moon the virginal white queen of grace, Mary. Could I but see thy face? Death could not come at all too soon. O crowned by God with thorns and pain, Mother of Christ, O mystic wife, My heart is weary of this life, And over sad to sing again. O crowned by God with love and flame, O crowned by Christ, the Holy One, O listen ere the search. Ave Maria Plena Gratia From the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Was this his coming? I had hoped to see a scene of wondrous glory, as was told of some great god who in a rain of gold broke open bars and fell on Danae, or a dread vision as when Semele, sickening for love and unappeased desire, prayed to see God's clear body, and the fire caught her brown limbs and slew her utterly. With such glad dreams I sought this holy place, and now with wandering eyes and heart I stand before the supreme mystery of love, some kneeling girl with passionless pale face, an angel with a lily in his hand. Italia from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Lian Italia, thou art fallen, though with sheen of battle spears thy clamorous armies stride from the North Alps to the Sicilian tide. Ay, fallen, though the nations hail thee queen, because rich gold in every town is seen and on thy sapphire lake in tossing pride of wind-filled vans thy myriad galleys ride beneath one flag of red and white and green o oh, fair and strong o oh, strong and fair in vain look southward where rome's desecrated town lies mourning for her god-anointed king look heavenward shall god allow this thing nay but some flame-girt raphael shall come down and smile Sonnet, written in Holy Week at Genoa, from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. I wandered through Scoglietto's far retreat, the oranges on each o'erhanging spray burned as bright lamps of gold to shame the day. 
Some startled bird with fluttering wings and fleet Made snow of all the blossoms at my feet Like silver moons a pale narcissi lay And the curved waves that streaked the great green bay Laughed e the sun, and life seemed very sweet Outside the young boy priest passed singing clear Jesus the son of Mary has been slain O oh, come and fill his sepulchre with flowers Ah, God, ah, God, those dear Hellenic hours had drowned all memory of thy bitter pain. Rome Unvisited from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. One. The corn is turned from grey to red since first my spirit wandered forth from the drear cities of the north and to Italia's mountains fled, and here I set my face towards home, for all my pilgrimage is done. Although methinks yon blood-red sun marshals the way to holy Rome. O oh, blessed lady, who dost hold upon the seven hills thy reign, O oh, mother without blot or stain, crowned with bright crowns of triple gold, O oh, Roma, Roma, at thy feet I lay this barren gift of song, for, ah, the way is steep and long that leads unto thy sacred street. 2. And yet what joy it were for me to turn my feet unto the south, and journeying towards the Tiber mouth, to kneel again at Fiesole, and wandering through the tangled pines that break the gold of Arno's stream, to see the purple mist and gleam of morning on the Apennines, by many a vineyard hidden home, orchard and olive garden grey, till from the drear Campania's way the seven hills bear up the dome. Three. A pilgrim from the northern seas, what joy for me to seek alone the wondrous temple and the throne of him who holds the awful keys, when, bright with purple and with gold, come priest and holy cardinal, and, born above the heads of all, the gentle shepherd of the fold. O oh, joy to see before I die the only God-anointed king, and hear the silver trumpets ring a triumph as he passes by, or at the brazen-pillared shrine holds high the mystic sacrifice, and shows his God to human eyes beneath the veil of bread and wine. 4. For, lo, what changes time can bring! The cycles of revolving years may free my heart from all its fears, and teach my lips a song to sing. Before yon field of trembling gold is garnered into dusty sheaves, or ere the autumn's scarlet leaves flutter as birds adown the wold, I may have run the glorious race, and caught the torch while yet aflame, and called upon the holy name of him. Urbs Sacra Eterna From the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Rome, what a scroll of history thine has been! In the first days thy sword republican Ruled the whole world for many an age's span Then of the peoples wert thou royal queen Till in thy streets the bearded goth was seen and now upon thy walls the breezes fan, Ah, city crowned by God, discrowned by man, The hated flag of red and white and green. When was thy glory? When, in search for power, Thine eagle slew to greet the double sun, And the wild nation shuddered at thy rod? Nay, but thy glory tarried for this hour, When pilgrims kneel before the Holy One, Sonnet on Hearing the Dies Irae Sung in the Sistine Chapel 
From the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Nay, Lord, not thus. White lilies in the spring, Sad olive groves or silver-breasted dove, Teach me more clearly of thy life and love Than terrors of red flame and thundering. The hillside vines, dear memories of thee bring, a bird at evening flying to its nest tells me of one who had no place of rest i think it is of thee the sparrows sing come rather on some autumn afternoon when red and brown are burnished on the leaves and the fields echo to the gleaner's song come when the splendid fullness of the moon looks down upon the rows of golden sheaves Easter Day from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne The silver trumpets rang across the dome, The people knelt upon the ground with awe, And borne upon the necks of men I saw, Like some great god, the holy lord of Rome. Priest-like, he wore a robe more white than foam, And king-like, swathed himself in royal red three crowns of gold rose high upon his head in splendor and in light the pope passed home my heart stole back across wide ways of years to one who wandered by a lonely sea and sought in vain for any place of rest foxes have holes and every bird is nest i only i must wander wearily and Etenebris from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Come down, O Christ, and help me. Reach thy hand, for I am drowning in a stormier sea Than Simon on thy lake of Galilee. The wine of life is split upon the sand, My heart is as some famine murdered land. Once all good things have perished utterly, and well I know my soul in hell must lie. If I this night before God's throne should stand, he sleeps perchance or riddeth to the chase like Baal, where his prophets howl that name, from morn to noon on camel's smitten height. Nay, peace, I shall behold before the night, the feet of brass, the robe more white than flame, the wounded Vita Nuova from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Lian. I stood by the unvengeable sea, till the wet waves drenched face and hair with spray. The long red fires of the dying day burned in the west, the wind piped drearily, and to the land a clamorous gull did flee. Alas, I cried, my life is full of pain, and who can garner fruit or golden grain? from these waste fields which travail ceaselessly my nets scaped wide with many a break and flaw not thus i threw them as my final cast into the sea and waited for the end when lo a sudden glory and i saw from the black waters of my tortured past the argent Madonna Mia, from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. 
A lily girl, not made for this world's pain, with the brown, soft hair close braided by her ears, and longing eyes half veiled by slumberous tears, like bluest water seen through mists of rain, pale cheeks whereon no love hath left its stain, red underlip drawn in for fear of love, and white throat, whiter than the silver dove, through whose wan marble creeps one purple vein. Yet, though my lips shall praise her without cease, even to kiss her feet I am not bold, being o'ershadowed by the wings of awe. Like a Dante, when he stood with Beatrice beneath the flaming lion's breast, THE NEW HELEN From the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Where hast thou been since round the walls of Troy the sons of God fought in that great emprise? Why dost thou walk our common earth again? Hast thou forgotten that impassioned boy, his purple galley, and his Tyrian men, and treacherous Aphrodite's mocking eyes? For surely it was thou who, like a star hung in the silver silence of the night, didst lure the old world's chivalry and might into the clamorous crimson waves of war. Or didst thou rule the fire-laden moon? An amorous Sidon was thy temple built over the light and laughter of the sea? Where, behind lattice scarlet wrought and gilt, some brown-limbed girl did weave thee tapestry, all through the waste and wearied hours of noon, till her wan cheek with flame of passion burned, and she rose up the sea-washed lips to kiss of some glad Cyprian sailor, safe returned from Calpe and the cliffs of Heracles? No! Thou art Helen, and none other one. It was for thee that young Sarpedon died, and Memnon's manhood was untimely spent. It was for thee gold-crested Hector tried with Thetis's child that evil race to run in the last year of thy beleaguerment. Ay, even now the glory of thy fame burns in those fields of trampled asphodel, where the high lords whom Ilion knew so well clash ghostly shields and call upon thy name. Where hast thou been? In that enchanted land whose slumbering veils forlorn Calypso knew, where never mower rose at break of day, but all unswathed the trammeling grasses grew, and the sad shepherd saw the tall corn stand, till summer's red had changed to withered grey. Didst thou lie there by some Lethean stream, deep brooding on thine ancient memory, the crash of broken spears, the fiery gleam from shivered helm, the Grecian battle cry? Nay, thou wert hidden in that hollow hill with one who is forgotten utterly, that discrowned queen men call the Irisene. Hidden away that never mightst thou see the face of her, Before whose mouldering shrine to-day at Rome the silent nations kneel, Who gat from love no joyous gladdening, But only love's intolerable pain, Only a sword to pierce her heart in twain, Only the bitterness of child-bearing. The lotus leaves which heal the wounds of death lie in thy hand, Oh, be thou kind to me, while yet I know the summer of my days, for hardly can my tremulous lips draw breath to fill the silver trumpet with thy praise. So bowed am I before thy mystery, so bowed and broken on love's terrible wheel, that I have lost all hope and heart to sing, yet care I not what ruined time may bring, if in thy temple thou wilt let me kneel. Alas, alas, thou wilt not tarry here, but, like that bird, the servant of the sun, who flies before the north wind and the night, so wilt thou fly our evil land and drear, back to the tower of thine old delight, and the red lips of young Euphorion, nor shall I ever see thy face again, but in this poisonous garden close must stay, 
crowning my brows with the thorn crown of pain till all my loveless life shall pass away oh helen 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 yet a while yet for a little while o oh, tarry here till the dawn cometh and the shadows flee for in the gladsome sunlight of thy smile of heaven or hell i have no thought of fear seeing i know no other god but thee no other god save him before whose feet in nets of gold the tired planets move the incarnate spirit of spiritual love who in thy body holds his joyous seat thou wert not born as common women are but girt with silver splendour of the foam didst from the depths of sapphire seas arise and at thy coming some immortal star bearded with flame blazed in the eastern skies and waked the shepherds on thine island home thou shalt not die no asps of egypt creep close at thy heels to taint the delicate air no sullen blooming poppy stain thy hair those scarlet heralds of eternal sleep lily of love pure and inviolate tower of ivory red rose of fire thou hast come down our darkness to illume for we close caught in the wide nets of fate wearied with waiting for the world's desire aimlessly wandered in the house of gloom aimlessly sought some slumberous anodyne for wasted lives for lingering wretchedness till we beheld thy re-arisen shrine The Burden of Itis from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. This English Thames is holier far than Rome. Those harebells, like a sudden flush of sea, breaking across the woodland, with the foam of meadow sweet and white anemone to fleck their blue waves. God is likelier there than hidden in that crystal-hearted star the pale monks bear. Those violet gleaming butterflies that take yon creamy lily for their pavilion are monsignors, and where the rushes shake a lazy pike lies basking in the sun, his eyes half shut. He is some mitred old bishop in partibus. Look at those gaudy scales all green and gold. The wind, the restless prisoner of the trees, does well for Palestrina. One would say the mighty master's hands were on the keys of the Maria organ, which they play when early on some sapphire Easter morn, in a high litter red as blood or sin, the Pope is born, from his dark house out to the balcony, above the bronze gates in the crowded square, whose very fountains seem for ecstasy to toss their silver lances in the air and stretching out weak hands to east and west in vain sends peace to peaceless lands to restless nations rest is not yon lingering orange afterglow that stays to vex the moon more fair than all rome's lordliest pageants strange a year ago i knelt before some crimson cardinal who bare the host across the esquiline and now those common poppies in the wheat seem twice as fine the blue-green bean-fields yonder tremulous with the last shower sweeter perfume bring through this cool evening than the odorous flame-jewelled censers the young deacons swing when the grey priest unlocks the curtained shrine and makes god's body from the common fruit of corn and vine poor fra giovanni bawling at the mass were out of tune now for a small brown bird sings overhead and through the long cool grass i see that throbbing throat which once i heard on starlit hills of flower-starred arcady once where the white and crescent sand of salamis meets sea 
sweet as a swallow twittering on the eaves at daybreak when the mower wets his scythe and stock doves murmur and the milkmaid leaves her little lonely bed and carols blithe to see the heavy lowing cattle wait stretching their huge and dripping mouths across the farmyard gate and sweet are the hops upon the Kentish leaves, and sweet the wind that lifts the new-mown hay, and sweet the fretful swarms of grumbling bees that round and round the linden blossoms play, and sweet the heifer breathing in the stall, and the green bursting figs that hang upon the red brick wall. And sweet to hear the cuckoo mock the spring, while the last violet loiters by the well. And sweet to hear the shepherd Daphne sing, the song of Linus through a sunny dell, of warm Arcadia, where the corn is gold, and the slight, lithe-limbed reapers dance about the wattled fold. And sweet with young liquors to recline in some Illyrian valley far away, where canopied on herbs a Mars sign, we too might waste the summer trancid day, matching our reeds in sportive rivalry, while far beneath us frets the troubled purple of the sea. But sweeter far if silver sandaled foot of some long hidden god should ever tread the Nuna meadows, if with reeded flute pressed to his lips some fawn might raise his head by the green water flags, ah, sweet indeed to see the heavenly herdsman call his white fleeced flock to feed. Then sing to me, thou tuneful chorister, though what thou sings be thine own requiem. Tell me thy tale, thou hapless chronicler of thine own tragedies. Do not contemn these unfamiliar haunts, this English field, for many a lovely coronal our northern isle can yield, which Grecian meadows know not. Many a rose, which all day long in vales Aeolian, a lad might seek in vain for, overgrows our hedges like a wanton courtesan, unthrifty of her beauty. Lilies, too, Ilyssus never mirrored star streams, and cockles blue drop the green wheat, which, though they are the signs for swallows going south, would never spread their azure tents between the Attic vines. Even that little weed of ragged red, which bids the robin pipe in Arcady, would be a trespasser, and many an unsung elegy sleeps in the reeds that fringe our winding thames, which to awake were sweeter ravishment than ever searing swept for, diadems of brown bee-studded orchids which were meant for Cytheria's brows are hidden there, unknown to Cytheria, and by yonder pasturing steer there is a tiny yellow daffodil, the butterfly can see it from afar, although one summer evening's dew could fill its little cup twice over ere the star had called the lazy shepherd to his fold, and be no prodigal. Each leaf is flecked with spotted gold, as if Jove's gorgeous lemondane, hot from his gilded arms, had stooped to kiss the trembling petals, or young Mercury, low flying to the dusky fort of Dis, had with one feather of his pinions just brushed them. The slight stem which bears the burden of its sons is hardly thicker than the gossamer, or poor Arachne's silver tapestry. Men say it bloomed upon the sepulchre of one I sometime worshipped, but to me it seems to bring diviner memories of fawn-loved Heliconian glades and blue nymph-haunted seas, of an untrodden vale at Tempe where on the clear river's marge Narcissus lies, the tangle of the forest in his hair, the silence of the woodland in his eyes, wooing that drifting imagery which is no sooner kissed than broken, memories of Selma Marcus, who is not boy or girl, and yet is both, fed by two fires, and unsatisfied through their excess, each passion being loth for love's own sake to leave the other's side, yet killing love by staying, memories of oreads peeping through the leaves of silent moonlit trees, of lonely Ariadne on the wharf at Naxos, when she saw the treacherous crew far out at sea, and waved her crimson scarf, and called false Theseus back again, nor knew that Dionysus' son in amber pard was close behind her, memories of what Meone's bard with sightless eyes beheld, 
the wall of Troy, Queen Helen lying in the carven room, and at her side an amorous red-lipped boy, trimming with dainty hand his helmet's plume, and far away the moil, the shout, the groan, as Hector shielded off the spear and ajax hurled the stone of winged perseus with his flawless sword cleaving the snaky tresses of the witch and all those tales imperishably stored in little grecian urns freightage more rich than any gaudy galleon of spain bear from the indies ever these at least spring back again for well i know they are not dead at all the ancient gods of grecian poesy they are asleep, and when they hear thee call, will wake and think tis very Thessaly, this tames the Dolian waters, this cool glade the yellow irised mead, where once young Itis laughed and played. If it was thou, dear jasmine cradled bird, who, from the leafy stillness of thy throne, sang to the wondrous boy, until he heard the horn of Atlanta faintly blown across the Cumner hills, and wandering through Bagley Wood at evening found the Attic poet's spring, ah, tiny sober-suited advocate that pleadest for the moon against the day, if thou didst make the shepherd seek his mate on that sweet questing, when Proserpina forgot it was not Sicily, and leant across the mossy Sanford style in ravished wonderment. Light-winged and bright-eyed miracle of the wood, if ever thou didst soothe with melody one of that little clan, that brotherhood which loved the morning star of Tuscany more than the perfect son of Raphael, and is immortal, sing to me! For I, too, love thee well. Sing on, sing on, let the dull world grow young, Let elemental things take form again, And the old shapes of beauty walk among the simple garths and open crofts, As when the son of Leto bare the willow rod, And the soft sheep and shaggy goats followed the boyish god. Sing on, sing on, and Bacchus will be here astride upon his gorgeous Indian throne, and over whimpering tigers shake the spear with yellow ivy crowned and gummy cone, while at his side the wanton bassard will throw the lion by the mane and catch the mountain kid. Sing on, and I will wear the leopard skin and steal the mooded wings of Ashtaroth upon his icy chariot we could win, Citharon in an hour ere the froth has overbrimmed the wine vat or the fawn ceased from the treading ay before the flickering lamp of dawn has scared the hooting owlet to its nest and warned the bat to close its filmy vans some maned girl with vine leaves on her breast will filch their beech nuts from the sleeping pans so softly that the little nested thrush will never wake and then with shrilly laugh and leap will rush down the green valley, where the fallen dew lies thick beneath the elm, and counter-store, till the brown satyrs and a jolly crew trample the loose strife down along the shore, and where their horned master sits in state, bringing strawberries and bloomy plums upon a wicker crate. Sing on, and soon with passion-wearied face Through the cool leaves Apollo's lad will come The Tyrian prince his bristled boar will chase Adown the chestnut copses all abloom And ivory-limbed, grey-eyed, with look of pride After yon velvet-coated deer the virgin maid will ride Sing on, and I, the dying boy, will see Stained with his purple blood the waxen bell That overweighs the yacinth, And to me the wretched Cyprian her woe will tell, And I will kiss her mouth and streaming eyes, And lead her to the myrtle-hidden grove where Adon lies. Cry out aloud on Itis, Memory that foster brother of remorse and pain Drops poison in mine ear. Oh, to be free, to burn one's old ships, and to launch again into the white-plumed battle of the waves, and fight old Proteus for the spoil of coral-flowered caves. 
oh for medea with her poppied spell oh for the secret of the colchian shrine oh for one leaf of that pale asphodel which binds the tired brows of proserpine and sheds such wondrous dews at eve that she dreams of the fields of enna by the far sicilian sea where oft the golden girdled bee she chased from lily to lily on the level mead ere yet her sombre lord had bitter taste the deadly fruit of that pomegranate seed ere the black steeds that harried her away down to the faint and flowerless land the sick and sunless day oh for one midnight and as paramour the venus of the little melian farm oh that some antique statue for one hour might wake to passion and that i could charm the dawn at florence from its dumb despair mix with those mighty limbs and make that giant breast my lair sing on sing on i would be drunk with life drunk with the trampled vintage of my youth i would forget the wearying wasted strife the riven veil the gorgon eyes of truth the prayerless vigil and the cry for prayer the barren gifts the lifted arms the dull insensate air sing on sing on o feathered niobe thou canst make sorrow beautiful and steal from joy its sweetest music not as we who by dead voices silence strive to heal our two untented wounds and do but keep pain barricadoed in our hearts and murder pillowed sleep sing louder yet why must i still behold the wan white face of that deserted christ whose bleeding hands my hands did once enfold whose smitten lips my lips so oft have kissed and now in mute and marble misery sits in his lone dishonoured house and weeps perchance for me o oh, memory cast down thy wreathed shell break thy horse lute o sad melpomene o sorrow sorrow keep thy cloistered cell nor dim with tears this limpid castaly cease cease sad bird thou dost the forest wrong to vex its sylvan quiet with such wild impassioned song cease cease or if tis anguish to be dumb take from the pastoral thrush her simpler air whose jocund carelessness doth more become this english woodland than thy keen despair ah cease and let the north wind bear thy lay back to the rocky hills of thrace the stormy dolian bay a moment more the startled leaves had stirred and dimion would have passed across the mead moonstruck with love and this still thames had heard pan plash and paddle groping for some reed to lure from her blue cave that naiad maid who for such piping listens half in joy and half afraid a moment more the waking dove had cooed the silver daughter of the silver sea with the fond jives of clinging hands had wooed her wanton from the chase and dryope had thrust aside the branches of her oak to see the lusty gold-haired lad reign in his snorting yoke a moment more the trees had stooped to kiss pale daphne just awakening from the swoon of tremulous laurels lonely Silmachus had bared his barren beauty to the moon and through the veil with sad voluptuous smile antinous had wandered the red lotus of the nile down leaning from his black and clustering hair to shade those slumberous eyelids caverned bliss or else on yonder grassy slope with bare high tunic limbs and ravished artemis had bade her hounds give tongue and rouse the deer from his green ambuscade with shrill halloo and pricking spear lie still lie still o passionate heart lie still o melancholy fold thy raven wing o sobbing dryad from thy hollow hill come not with such despondent answering no more thou winged marcias complain apollo loveth not to hear such troubled songs of pain it was a dream the glade is tenantless no soft ionian laughter moves the air the thames creeps on in sluggish leadenness and from the copse left desolate and bare fled his young bacchus with his revelry 
yet still from Newnham Wood there comes that thrilling melody, so sad, that one might think a human heart break in each separate note, a quality which music sometimes has, being the art which is most nigh to tears and memory. Poor mourning Philomel, what dost thou fear? Thy sister doth not haunt these fields, Pandion is not here. Here is no cruel lord with murderous blade, No woven web of bloody heraldries, But mossy dells for roving comrades made, Warm valleys where the tired student lies with half-shut book, And many a winding walk where rustic lovers stray at eve in happy simple talk. The harmless rabbit gambles with its young across a trampled towing path, where late a troop of laughing boys and jostling throng cheered with their noisy cries the racing eight. The gossamer, with raveled silver threads, works at its little loom, and from the dusky ready sheds of the lone farm a flickering light shines out, where the swinked shepherd drives his bleating flock back to their wattled sheepcoats. A faint shout comes from some Oxford boat at Sandford Lock, and starts the moorhen from the sedgy rill, and the dim lengthening shadows flit like swallows up the hill. The heron passes homeward to the mere, the blue mist creeps among the shivering trees. Gold world by world the silent stars appear, and like a blossom blown before the breeze, a white moon drifts across the shimmering sky, mute arbitress of all thy sad, thy rapturous threnody. She does not heed thee, wherefore should she heed? She knows Endymion is not far away. "'Tis I, tis I, whose soul is as the reed "'which has no message of its own to play, "'so pipes another's bidding. "'It is I, drifting with every wind "'on the wide sea of misery. "'Ah, the brown bird has ceased. "'One exquisite trill about the sombre woodland "'seems to cling, dying in music, "'else the air is still, "'so still that one might hear the bat's small wing Wander and wheel above the pines, or tell each tiny dewdrop dripping from the bluebell's brimming cell. And far away across the lengthening wold, across the willowy flats and thickets brown, Magdalen's tall tower tipped with tremulous gold marks the long high street of the little town, and warns me to return. I must not wait. Hark! Tis a Impression du Matin from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Lian. The Thames Nocturne of blue and gold changed to a harmony in grey, a barge with ochre-coloured hay dropped from the wharf and chill and cold. The yellow fog came creeping down the bridges till the house's walls seemed changed to shadows and the St. Paul's loomed like a bubble over the town. Then suddenly arose the clan of waking life, the streets were stirred with country wagons, and a bird flew to the glistening roofs and sang. But one pale woman all alone, the daylight kissing her wan hair, loitered beneath the gas lamps. Magdalene Walks from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Lian The little white clouds are racing over the sky, and the fields are strewn with the gold of the flower of March. The daffodil breaks underfoot, and the tasseled larch sways and swings as the thrush goes hurrying by. A delicate odor is borne on the winds of the morning breeze, the odor of deep wet grass and of brown new furrowed earth. 
the birds are singing for joy of the spring's glad birth hopping from branch to branch on the rocking trees and all the woods are alive with the murmur and the sound of spring and the rosebud breaks into pink on the climbing briar and the crocus bed is a quivering moon of fire girdled round with a belt of amethyst ring and the plain to the pine tree is whispering some tale of love till it rustles with laughter and tosses its mantle of green and the gloom of which elms hollow is lit with the iris sheen of the burnished rainbow throat and the silver breast of a dove see the lark starts up from his bed in the meadow there breaking the gossamer threads and the nets of dew and flashing adown the river a flame of blue they Athanasia from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter To that gaunt house of art which lacks for naught of all the great things men have saved from time the withered body of a girl was brought dead ere the world's glad youth had touched its prime and seen by lonely arabs lying hid in the dim womb of some black pyramid but when they had unloosed the linen band which swathed the Egyptian's body, lo, was found closed in the wasted hollow of her hand a little seed, which sown in English ground did wondrous snow of starry blossoms bear, and spread rich odors through our springtide air with such strange arts this flower did allure that all forgotten was the asphodel and the brown bee the lily's paramour forsook the cup where he was wont to dwell for not a thing of earth it seemed to be but stolen from some heavenly arcady in vain the sad narcissus worn and white to at its own beauty hung across the stream the purple dragonfly had no delight with its gold dust to make his wings a gleam ah no delight the jasmine bloom to kiss or brush the rain pearls from the eucharist for love of it the passionate nightingale forgot the hills of thrace the cruel king and the pale dove no longer cared to sail through the wet woods at time of blossoming but round this flower of egypt sought to float with silvered wing and amethystine throat while the hot sun blazed in his tower of blue a cooling wind crept from the land of snows and the warm south with tender tears of dew drenched its white leaves when hesperos uprose amid those sea-green meadows of the sky on which the scarlet bars of sunset lie but when o'er wastes of lily-haunted field the tired birds had stayed their amorous tune and broad and glittering like an argent shield high in the sapphire heavens hung the moon did no strange dream or evil memory make each tremulous petal of its blossoms shake ah no to this bright flower a thousand years seemed but the lingering of a summer's day it never knew the tide of cankering fears which turn a boy's gold hair to withered grey the dread desire of death it never knew or how all folk that they were born must rue for we to death with pipe and dancing go nor would we pass the ivory gate again as some sad river wearied of its flow through the dull plains the haunts of common men leaps lover-like into the terrible sea and counts it gain to die so gloriously we mar our lordly strength in barren strife with the world's legions led by clamorous care it never feels decay but gathers life from the pure sunlight and the supreme air we live beneath time's wasting sorrow serenade for music from the poems of oscar wilde by oscar wilde read for librivox.org by lian 
the western wind is blowing fair across the dark aegean sea and at the secret marble stair my tyrian galley waits for thee come down the purple sail is spread the watchman sleeps within the town o oh, leave thy lily flowered bed o oh, lady mine come down come down she will not come i know her well of lovers vows she hath no care and little good a man can tell of one so cruel and so fair true love is but a woman's toy they never know the lover's pain and i who loved as loves a boy must love in vain must love in vain o noble pilot tell me true is that the sheen of golden hair or is it but the tangled dew that binds the passion flowers there good sailor come and tell me now is that my lady's lily hand or is it but a gleaming prow or is it but the silver sand no no tis not the tangled dew tis not the silver fretted sand it is my own dear lady true with golden hair and lily hand o oh, noble pilot steer for joy good sailor ply the labouring oar this is the queen of life and joy whom we must bear from grecian shore the waning sky grows faint and blue it wants an hour still of day aboard aboard my gallant crew o oh, lady mine away away o oh, noble pilot steer for troy good sailor ply the labouring oar o oh, loved has only loved Endymion for music from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The apple trees are hung with gold and birds are loud in Arcady the sheep lie bleating in the fold the wild goat runs across the wold but yesterday his love he told i know he will come back to me o oh, rising moon o oh, lady moon be you my lover's sentinel you cannot choose but know him well for he is shod with purple shoon you cannot choose but know my love for he is shepherd's crook doth bear and he is soft as any dove and brown and curly is his hair the turtle now has ceased to call upon her crimson-footed groom the grey wolf prowls about the stall the lily singing seneschal sleeps in the lily bell and all the violet hills are lost in gloom o oh, risen moon o oh, holy moon stand on the top of heliki and if my own true love you see ah if you see the purple shoon the hazel crook the lad's brown hair the goatskin wrapped about his arm tell him that i am waiting where the rushlight glimmers in the farm the falling dew is cold and chill and no bird sings in arcady the little fawns have left the hill even the tired daffodil has closed its gilded doors and still my lover comes not back to me false moon false moon o oh, waning moon where is my own true lover gone where are the lips vermilion the shepherd's crook the purple shoon why spare that silver pavilion why wear that veil of drifting mist ah thou hast young endymion la bella donna della mia mente from the poems of oscar wilde by oscar wilde read for LibriVox.org by lian my limbs are wasted with a flame my feet are sore with travelling for calling on my lady's name my lips have now forgot to sing o linnet in the white rose brake String from my love thy melody o oh, lark sing louder for lover's sake my gentle lady passeth by she is too fair for any man 
to see or hold his heart's delight fairer than queen or courtesan or moonlit water in the night her hair is bound with myrtle leaves green leaves upon her golden hair green grasses through the yellow sheaves of autumn corn are not more fair her little lips more made to kiss than to cry bitterly for pain are tremulous as brook water is or roses after evening rain her neck is like white melilot flushing for pleasure of the sun the throbbing of the linen's throat is not so sweet to look upon as a pomegranate cut in twain white seeded is a crimson mouth her cheeks are as the fading stain where the peach reddens to the south o oh, twining hands o oh, delicate white body made for love and pain o oh, house of love oh Chanson from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Lian. A ring of gold and a milk-white dove are goodly gifts for thee, and a hempen robe for your own love to hang upon a tree. For you, a house of ivory, roses are white in the rose bower, a narrow bed for me to lie white oh white is the hemlock flower myrtle and jessamine for you or oh, the red rose is fair to see for me the cypress and the rue fairest of all is rosemary for you three lovers of your hand green grass where a man lies dead for me three paces Carmides from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter and Lien. One. He was a Grecian lad who, coming home with palpy figs and wine from Sicily, stood at his galley's prow and let the foam blow through his crisp brown curls unconsciously and holding wave and wind in boy's despite peered from his dripping seat across the wet and stormy night till with the dawn he saw a burnished spear like a thin thread of gold against the sky and hoisted sail and strained the creaking gear and bade the pilot head her lustily against the northwest gale and all day long held on his way and marked the rower's time with measured song and when the faint carithian hills were red dropped anchor in a little sandy bay and with fresh boughs of olive crowned his head and brushed from cheek and throat the hoary spray and washed his limbs with oil and from the hold brought out his linen tunic and his sandals brazen sold and a rich robe stained with the fish's juice which of some swarthy trader he had bought upon the sunny quay at syracuse and was with tyrian broderies in rout and by the questioning merchants made his way up through the soft and silver woods and when the labouring day had spun this tangled web of crimson clouds clomb the high hill and with swift silent feet crept to the fane unnoticed by the crowd of busy priests and from some dark retreat watched the young swains his frolic playmates bring the firstling of their little flock and the shy shepherd fling the crackling sot upon the flame or hang his studded crook against the temple wall to her who keeps away the ravenous fan of the bay's wolf from homestead and from store and then the clear-voiced maidens began to sing and to the altar each man brought some goodly offering a beechen cup brimming with milky foam a fair cloth wrought with cunning imagery of hounds in chase a waxen honeycomb dripping with oozy gold which scarce the bee had ceased from building 
a black skin of oil meet for the wrestlers a great boar the fierce and white tusked spoil stolen from artemis that jealous maid to please athena and the dappled hide of a tall stag who in some mountain glade had met the shaft and then the herald cried and from the pillared precinct one by one won the glad greeks well pleased that they their simple vows had done and the old priest put out the waning fires save that one lamp whose restless ruby glowed forever in the cell and the shrill lyres came fainter on the wind as down the road in joyous dance these country folk did pass and with stout hands the water closed the gates of polished brass long time he lay and hardly dared to breathe and heard the cadence drip of spilt out wine and the rose petals fallen from the wreath as the night breezes wandered through the shrine and seemed to be in some entranced swoon till through the open roof above the full and brimming moon flooded with sheeny waves the marble floor one from his nook upleapt the venturous lad and flinging wide the cedar carven door beheld an awful image saffron clad and armed for battle the gaunt griffin glared from the huge helm and the long lance of wreck and ruin flared like a red rod of flame stony and steeled the gorgon's head its leaden eyeballs rolled and writhed his naked horrors through the shield and gaped aghast with bloodless lips and cold in passion impotent while with blind gaze the blinking owl between the feet hooted in shrill amaze the lonely fisher as he trimmed his lamp far out at sea of sunium or cast the net for tunnies heard a brazen tramp of horses smite the waves and a wild blast divide the folded curtains of the night and knelt upon the little poop and prayed in holy fright and guilty lovers in their venery forget a little while their stolen sweets deeming they heard dread diane's bitter cry and the grim watchmen on their lofty seats ran to their shields in haste precipitate or strained black-bearded throats across the dusky parapet for round the temple rode the clan of arms and the twelve gods leapt up in marble fear and the air quaked with dissonant alarums till huge poseidon shook his mighty spear and on the frieze the prancing horses neighed and the low tread of hurrying feet ran from the cavalcade ready for death with parted lips he stood and well content as such a prize to see that calm wide brow that terrible maidenhood the marvel of that pitiless chastity ah well content indeed for never white since troy's young shepherd prince had seen so wonderful a sight ready for death he stood but lo the air grew silent and the horses ceased to neigh and off his brow he tossed the clustering hair and from his limbs he threw the cloak away for whom would not such love make desperate and nigher came and touched her throat and with hands violet undid the cuirass and the crocus gown and bare the breasts of polished ivory till from the waist the peplos falling down left visible the secret misery which to no lover will athena show the grand cool flanks the crescent thighs the bossy hills of snow those who have never known a lover's sin let them not read my ditty it will be to their dull ears so musicless and thin that they will have no joy of it but thee to whose wan cheeks now creeps the lingering smile ye who have learned who eros is oh listen yet a while a little space he let his greedy eyes rest on the burnished image till mere sight half swooned for surfeit of such luxuries and then his lips in hungering delight fed on her lips around the towered neck he flung his arms nor cared at all his passion's will to check never i ween did lover hold such tryst for all night long he murmured honeyed word 
and saw her sweet unravished limbs and kissed her pale and argent body undisturbed and paddled with a polished throat and pressed his hot and beating heart upon her chill and icy breast it was as if numidian javelins pierced through and through his wild and whirling brain and his nerves thrilled like throbbing violins in exquisite pulsation and the pain was such sweet anguish that he never drew his lips from hers till overhead the lark of warning flew they who have never seen the daylight peer into a darkened room and drawn the curtain and with dull eyes and wearied from such dear and worshipped body risen they for certain will never know of what i try to sing how long the last kiss was how fond and late his lingering the moon was girdled with a crystal rim the sign which shipmen say is ominous of wrath in heaven the wan stars were dim and the low lightning east was tremulous with the faint fluttering winds of flying dawn ere from the silent sombre shine this lover had withdrawn down the steep rock with hurried feet and fast clomb the brave lad and reached the cave of pan and heard a goat-foot snoring as he passed and leapt upon a grassy knoll and ran like a young fowl unto an olive wood which in a shady valley by the well-built city stood and sought a little stream which well he knew for oftentimes a boyish careless shout the green and crested grebe he would pursue or snare in woven net the silver trout and down amid the startled reeds he lay panting in breathless sweet affright and waited for the day on the green bank he lay and let one hand dip in the cool dark eddies listlessly and soon the breath of morning came and fanned his hot flushed cheeks or lifted wantonly the tangled curls from off his forehead while he on the running water gazed with strange and secret smile and soon the shepherd in rough woollen cloak with his long crook did a wattled coat and from the stack a thin blue wreath of smoke curled through the air across the ripening oats and on a hill the yellow house dog bayed as through the crisp and rustling fern the heavy cattle strayed and when the lightfoot mower went afield across the meadows laced with threaded dew and the sheep bleated on a misty weald and from his nest the waking corncrake flew some woodmen saw him lying by the stream and marvelled much that any lad so beautiful could seem nor deemed him born of mortals and one said it is young hylas that falls runaway who with a naiad now would make his bed forgetting heracles but others nay it is narcissus his own paramour those are the fond and crimson lips no woman can allure and when they nearer came a third one cried it is young dionysos who has hid his bear and fawn skin by the river side weary of hunting with a basserit and wise indeed were we away to fly they live not long who on the gods immortal come to spy so turned they back and fear to look behind and told the timid swain how they had seen amid the reeds some woodland god reclined and no man dared to cross the open green and on that day no olive tree was slain nor rushes cut but all deserted was the fair domain save when the neat herd's lad his empty pail well slung upon his back with leap and bound raised on the other side and stopped to hail hoping that he some comrade knew had found and get no answer and then half afraid passed on his simple way or down the still and silent glade a little girl ran laughing from the farm not thinking of love's secret mysteries and when she saw the white and gleaming arm and all his manhood with longing eyes whose passion mocked her sweet virginity watched him a while and then stole back sadly and wearily far off 
he heard the city's hum and noise and now and then the shriller laughter where the passionate purity of brown-limbed boys wrestled or raised in the clear healthful air and now and then a little tinkling bell as the shorn weather led the sheep down to the mossy well through the grey willows danced the fretful nut the grasshopper chirped idly from the tree in sleek and oily coat the water rat breasting the little ripples manfully made for the wild duck's nest from bough to bough hopped the shy finch and the huge tortoise crept across the slope on the faint wind floated the silky seas as the bright scythe swept through the waving grass the oozlecocks splashed circles in the reeds and flecked with silver whirls the forest glass which scarce had caught again its imagery ere from its bed the dusky tench leapt at the dragonfly but little care had he for anything though up and down the beach the squirrel played and from the copse the linnet began to sing to its brown mate its sweetest serenade ah little care indeed for he had seen the breasts of pallas and the naked wonder of the queen and when the herdsman called his straggling goats with whistling pipe across the rocky road and the shard beetle with his trumpet notes boomed through the darkening woods and seemed to bode of coming storm and the belated crane passed homeward like a shadow and the dull big drops of rain fell on the pattering fig leaves up he rose and from the gloomy forest went his way past sombre homestead and wet ochred clothes and came at last unto a little quay and called his mates abroad and took his seat on the high poop and pushed from land and loosed a dripping sheet and steered across the bay and one nine suns passed down the long and laddered way of gold and nine pale moons had breathed their orisons to the chaste stars their confessors or told their dearest secret to the downy moth that would not fly at noonday through the foam and surging froth came a great owl with yellow sufferer's eyes and lit upon the ship whose timbers creaked as though the ladding of three argosies were in the hold and flapped his wings and shrieked and darkness straightway stole across the deep sheathed was orion's sword dread mars himself let down the steep and the moon hid behind a tawny mask of drifting cloud and from the ocean's marge rose the red plume the huge and horned cask the seven cupid spear the brazen targe and clad in bright and burnished panoply athena strode across the stretch of sick and shivering sea to the dull sailor's sight her loosened looks seemed like the jagged storm-rack only the spume that flows on hidden rocks and marking how the rising waters beat against the rolling ship the pilot cried to the young helmsman at the stern to luff to windward side but he the overbold adulterer a dear profaner of great mysteries an ardent amorous idolater when he beheld those grand relentless eyes laughed loud for joy and crying out i come leapt from the lofty poop into the chill and churning foam then fell from the high heaven one bright star one dancer left the circling galaxy and back to athens on her clattering car in all the pride of vanished divinity pale pallas swept with shrill and steely clang and a few gurgling bubbles rose where her boy lover sank and the mast shuddered as the gaunt owl flew with mocking hoots after the wrathful queen and the old pilot bade the trembling crew hoist the big sail and told how he had seen close to the stern a dim and giant form and like a dipping swallow the stout ship dashed through the storm and no man dared to speak of Carmides, deeming that he some evil thing had wrought and when they reached the straight simplegides they bleached their galley on the shore and saw the toll-gate of the city hastily and in the market show their brown and pictured pottery two but some good triton god had ruth 
and bear the boy's drowned body back to Grecian land, and mermaids combed his dank and dripping hair, and smoothed his brow, and loosed his clenching hand. Some brought sweet spices from far Araby, and others bade the halcyon sing her softest lullaby. And when he neared his old Athenian home, a mighty billow rose up suddenly upon whose oily back the clotted foam lay diapered in some strange fantasy. And clasping him onto its glassy breast, swept landward, like a white-maned steed upon a venturous quest. Now where Colonos leans onto the sea, there lies a long and level stretch of lawn. The rabbit knows it, and the mountain bee. For it deserts Hymettus, and the fawn is not afraid, For never through the day comes a cry ruder than the shout of shepherd lads at play. But often from the thorny labyrinth and tangled branches of the circling wood, The stealthy hunter sees young Hyacinth hurling the polished disc, And draws his hood over his guilty gaze, and creeps away, nor dares to wind his horn, or else at the first break of day the dryads come and throw the leathern ball along the reedy shore, and circumvent some goat-eared pan to be their seneschal, for fear of bold Poseidon's ravishment, and loose their girdles with shy timorous eyes, lest from the surf his azure arms and purple beard should rise. On this side and on that a rocky cave, hung with a yellow-belled laburnum, stands. Smooth is the beach, save where some ebbing wave leaves its faint outline etched upon the sands, as though it feared to be too soon forgot by the green rush, its playfellow. And yet it is a spot so small that the inconstant butterfly could steal the hoarded honey from each flower ere it was a noon, and still not satisfy its over-greedy love. Within an hour a sailor-boy, were he but rude enough to land and pluck a garland for his galley's painted prow, would almost leave the little meadow bare, for it knows nothing of great pageantry. Only a few narcissi here and there stand separate in sweet austerity, dotting the unmown grass with silver stars, and here and there daffodil waves tiny scimitars. Hither the billow brought him, and was glad of such dear servitude, and where the land was virgin of all waters laid the lad upon the golden margin of the strand, and like a lingering lover oft returned to kiss those pallid limbs which once with intense fire burned, ere the wet seas had quenched that holocaust, that self-fed flame, that passionate lust ahead, ere grisly death with chill and nipping frost had withered up those lilies white and red, which, while the boy would through the forest range, answered each other in a sweet and tiffinal counterchange. And when at dawn the wood-nymphs, hand in hand, threaded the bosky dell, their satyr spied the boy's pale body stretched upon the sand, and feared Poseidon's treachery and cried, and like bright sunbeams flittering through a glade, each startled dryad sought some safe and leafy ambuscade, save one white girl, who deemed it would not be so dread a thing to feel a sea-god's arms crushing her breasts in amorous tyranny, and long to listen to those subtle charms insidious lovers weave when they would win some fenced fortress, and stole back again, nor thought it sin to yield her treasure unto one so fair, and lay beside him, thirsty with love's draught, called him soft names, played with his tangled hair, and with hot lips made havoc of his mouth, afraid he might not awake, and then afraid lest he might wake too soon, fled back, and then, fond renegade, returned to fresh assault, and all day long sat at his side, and laughed at her new toy, and held his hand, and sang her sweetest song, then frowned to see how froward was the boy, who would not with her maidenhood entwine, nor knew that three days since his eyes had looked on Proserpine, nor knew what sacrilege his lips had done, but said, He will awake. I know him well. He will awake at evening when the sun hangs his red shield on Corn's citadel. This sleep is but a cruel treachery to make me love him more. 
and in some cavern of the sea deeper than ever falls the fish's line already a huge triton blows his horn and weaves a garland from the crystalline and drifting ocean tendrils to adorn the emerald pillars of our bridal bed for sphered in foaming silver and with coral crowned head we two will sit upon a throne of pearl and a blue wave will be our canopy and at our feet the water snakes will curl in all their amethystine panoply of diamond and mail and we will mark the mullet swimming by the mast of some storm foundered bark vermilion finned with eyes of bossy gold like flakes of crimson light and the great deep his glassy portal chamber will unfold and we will see the painted dolphin sleep cradled by murmuring halcyons on the rocks where proteus in quaint suit of green pastures his monstrous flocks and tremulous opal-hued anemones will wave their purple fringes where we tread upon the mirrored floor and argosies of fishes flecked with tawny scales will thread the drifting cordage of the shattered wreck and honey-coloured amber beads our twining limbs will deck but when that baffled lord of war the sun with gaudy pennon flying passed away into his brazen house and one by one the little yellow stars began to stray across the field of heaven ah then indeed she feared his lips upon her lips would never care to feed and cried awake already the pale moon washes the trees with silver and the wave creeps grey and chilly up the sandy dune the croaking frogs are out and from the cave the night-jar shrieks the fluttering bats repass and the brown stoat with hollow flanks creeps through the dusky grass nay though thou art a god be not so coy for in yon stream there is a little reed that often whispers how a lovely boy lay with her once upon a grassy mead who when his cruel pleasure he had done spread wings of rustling gold and soared aloft into the sun be not so coy the laurel trembles still with great apollo's kisses and the fir whose clustering sisters fringe the seaward hill hath many a tale of that bold ravisher whom men call boreas and i have seen the mocking eyes of hermes through the poplar's silvery sheen even the jealous naiads call me fair and every morn a young and ruddy swain woos me with apples and with locks of hair and seeks to soothe my virginal disdain by all the gifts the gentle wood-nymphs love but yesterday he brought to me an iris plumaged dove with little crimson feet which with its store of seven spotted eggs the cruel lad had stolen from the lofty sycamore at daybreak when her amorous comrade had flown off in search of buried juniper which most they love the fretful wasp that earliest vintager of the blue grapes hath not persistency so constant as his simple shepherd-boy for my poor lips his joyous purity and laughing sunny eyes might well decoy a dryad from her oath to artemis for very beautiful is he his mouth was made to kiss his argent forehead like a rising moon over the dusky hills of meeting brows is crescent-shaped the hot and tyrian noon leads from the myrtle grove no goodlier spouse for cytheria the first silky down fringes his blushing cheeks and his young limbs are strong and brown and he is rich and fat and fleecy herds of bleating sheep upon his meadows lie and many an earthen bowl of yellow curds is in his homestead for the thievish fly to swim and drown in the pink clover mead keeps its sweet store for him and he can pipe on oaten reed and yet i love him not it was for thee i kept my love i knew that thou wouldst come to rid me of this pallid chastity thou fairest flower of the flowerless form of all the wide aegean brightest star of ocean's azure heavens where the mirrored planets are i knew that thou wouldst come for when at first the dry wood burdened and the sap of spring swelled in my green and tender bark or burst a myriad multitudinous blossoming which mocked the midnight with its mimic moons that did not dread the dawn and first the thrush's rapturous tune startled the squirrel from its granary and cuckoo flowers fringed the narrow lane 
through my young leaves the sensuous ecstasy crept like new wine and every mossy vein throbbed with the fitful pulse of amorous blood and the wild winds of passion shook my slim stem's maidenhood the trooping fawns at evening came and laid their cool black noses on my lowest boughs, and on my topmost branch the blackburn made a little nest of grasses for his spouse, and now and then a twittering wren would light on a thin twig which hardly bear the weight of such delight. I was the attic shepherd's trysting place, beneath my shadow Amaryllis lay, and round my trunk with laughing Daphnis chased the timorous girl, Still tired out with play, she felt his hot breath stir her tangled hair, and turned and looked, and fled no more from such delightful snare. Then come away unto my ambuscade, where clustering woodbine weaves a canopy for amorous pleasance, and the rustling shade of Paphian myrtle seems to sanctify the dearest rites of love. There in the cool and green recesses of his farthest depth there is a pool, the oozels haunt, the wild bees' pasturage, for round its rim great creamy lilies float through their flat leaves in verdant anchorage. Each cup a white-sailed, golden-laden boat steered by a dragonfly. Be not afraid to leave the swan and wave-kissed shore. Surely the place was made for lovers such as we, the Cyprian queen, one arm around her boyish paramour, strays often there at eve and i have seen the moon strip off her misty vestiture for young endymion's eyes be not afraid the panther feet of dia never tread that secret glade nay if thou wilt back to the beating brine back to the boisterous billow let us go and walk all day beneath the high line huge vault of neptune's watery portico and watch the purple monsters of the deep sport and ungainly play and from his lair keen xiphia sleep for if my mistress find me lying here she will not ruth or gentle pity show but lay her boar-spear down and with austere relentless fingers string the cornel bow and draw the feathered notch against her breast and loose the arched cord, I, even now upon the quest I hear her hurrying feet. Awake, awake, thou laggard in love's battle. Once at least let me drink deep of passion's wine, and slake my parched being with the nectarous feast which even gods affect. Oh, come, love, come, still we have time to reach the cavern of thine azure home. Scarce had she spoken when the shuddering trees shook, and the leaves divided, and the air grew conscious of a god, and the grey seas crawled backward, and a long and dismal blare blew from some tasselled horn, a sleuth-hound bayed, and like a flame a barbed reed flew whizzing down the glade. And where the little flowers of her breast just break into their milky blossoming, this murderous paramour, this unbidden guest, pierced and struck deep in horrid chambering, and ploughed a bloody furrow with its dart, and dug a long red road, and cleft with winged death her heart. Sobbing her life out with a bitter cry on the boy's body fell the dryad maid, sobbing for incomplete virginity, and raptures unenjoyed, and pleasures dead, and all the pain of things unsatisfied, and the bright drops of crimson youth crept down her throbbing side. Ah, pitiful it was to hear her moan, and very pitiful to see her die, ere she had yielded up her sweets, or known the joy of passion, that dread mystery, which not to know is not to live at all, and yet to know is to be held in death's most deadly thrall. But as it happed the queen of Scythia, who with Adonis all night long had lain within some shepherd's hut in Arcady, on team of silver doves and gilded wain was journeying Paphosward, high up afar from mortal ken between the mountains and the morning star. And when low down she spied the hapless pair, and heard the oread's faint despairing cry, whose cadence seemed to play upon the air as though it were a viol, Hastily she bade her pigeons fold each straining plume, and dropped to earth, and reached the strand, and saw their dolorous doom. 
for as the gardener turning back his head to catch the last notes of the linnet mows with a careless scythe too near some flower-bed and cuts the thorny pillar of the rose and with the flowers loosened loveliness strews a brown mould or as some shepherd lad in wantonness driving his little flock along the mead treads down two daffodils which side by side have lured the lady-bird with yellow breed and may the gaudy moth forget its pride treads down the brimming golden chalices under light feet which were not made for such rude ravages or as the schoolboy tired of his book flings himself down upon the reedy grass and plucks two water-lilies from the brook and for a time forgets the hour-glass then wearies up their sweets and goes his way and lets the hot sun kill them even so these lovers lay and venus cried it is dread artemis whose bitter hand hath wrought this cruelty or else that mightier may whose care it is to guard her strong and stainless majesty upon the hill athenian alas that they who loved so well and loved into death's house should pass so with soft hands she laid the boy and girl in the great golden wagon tenderly her white throat whiter than a moony pearl, just threaded with a blue vein's tapestry, had not yet ceased to throb, and still her breast swayed like a wind-stirred lily in ambiguous unrest. And then each pigeon spread its milky van, the bright car soared into the dawning sky, and like a cloud the aerial caravan passed over the Aegean silently, till the faint air was troubled with a song from the wan mouse that called on bleeding Thamus all night long. But when the doves had reached their wonted goal, where the wide stair of orbid marble dips its snow into the sea, her fluttering soul just shook the trembling petals of her lips and passed into the void, and Venus knew that one fair maid the less would walk amid her retinue, and bade her servants carve a cedar chest with all the wonder of this history. With a new scented womb their limbs should rest, Where olive trees make tender the blue sky On the low hills of Paphos, And the fawn pipes in the noonday, And the nightingale sings on till dawn. Nor failed they to obey her hest, And ere the morning bee had stung the daffodil With tiny fretful spear, Or from its lair the waking stag had leapt across the rill And roused the ouzel, Or the lizard crept athwart the sunny rock, beneath the grass their bodies slept and when daybreak within that silver shrine fed by the flames of cressets tremulous queen venus knelt and prayed to proserpine that she whose beauty made death amorous should beg a guerdon from her pallid lord and let desire pass across dread charon's icy ford three a melancholy moonless Acheron, far from the goodly earth and joyous day, where no spring ever buds, no ripening sun weighs down the apple trees, nor flowery may checkers with chestnuts blooms the grassy floor, where the thrushes never sing and piping linnets mate no more. There, by a dim and dark Lithian well, young Carmides was lying, wearily he plucked the blossoms from the asphodel, and with his little rifle treasury strewed the dull waters of the dusky stream, and watched the white stars founder, and the land was like a dream. When, as he gazed into the watery glass, and through his brown hair's curly tangle scanned his own wan face, a shadow seemed to pass across the mirror, and a little hand stole into his, and warm lips timidly brushes his pale cheeks, and breathed their secret forth into a sigh. Then turned he round his weary eyes and saw, and ever nigher still their faces came, and nigher ever did their young mouths draw, until there seemed one perfect rose of flame, and longing arms round her neck he cast, and felt her throbbing bosom, and his breath came hot 
and fast and all his hoarded sweets were hers to kiss and all her maidenhood was his to slay and limb to limb in long and rapturous bliss their passion waxed and waned o oh, why essay to pipe again of love too venturous reed enough enough that eros laughed upon that flowerless mead too venturous poesy o oh, why essay to pipe again of passion fold thy wings o'er daring icarus and bid thy lay sleep hidden in the lyre's silent streams till thou hast found the old castalian rill or from the lesbian waters plucked drowned sappho's golden quill enough enough that he whose life had been a fiery pulse of sin a splendid shame could in the loveless land of hades glean one scorching harvest from those fields of flame where passion walks with naked unshot feet and is not wounded ah enough that once their lips could meet in that wild throb when all existences seemed narrowed to one single ecstasy which dies through its own sweetness and the stress of too much pleasure ere persephone had bade them serve her by the ebon throne of the pale god who in the fields of anna loosed her zone Impression Le Silhouette from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Lian The sea is flecked with bars of grey, The dull dead wind is out of tune, And like a withered leaf the moon Is blown across the stormy bay. Etched clear upon the pallid sand, The black boat lies, a sailor boy, clambers abroad in careless joy with laughing face and gleaming hand and overhead a curlew's cry where through the dusky upland grass the young brown-throated reapers Impression La Fuite de la Lune From the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Lian To outer senses there is peace, a dreamy peace on either hand, deep silence in the shadowy land, deep silence where the shadows cease. Save for a cry that echoes shrill from some lone bird disconsolate, a corncrake calling to its mate the answer from the misty hill and suddenly the moon withdraws her sickle from the lightning skies and to her sombre cave the grave of keats from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Rid of the world's injustice and his pain, He rests at last beneath God's veil of blue, Taken from life when life and love were new, The youngest of the martyrs here is lain, Fair as Sebastian, and as early slain no cypress shades his grave no funeral yew but gentle violets weeping with the dew weave on his bones an ever-blossoming chain o oh, proudest heart that broke for misery o oh, sweetest lip since those of mitylene o oh, poet painter of our english land thy name was writ in water it shall stand and tears like mine will keep thy memory green.
Theocritus, a Villanelle, from the poems of Oscar Wilde, by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian. O singer of Persephone, in the dim meadows desolate, dost thou remember Sicily? Still through the ivy flits the bee, where Amaryllis lies in state, O singer of Persephone. Samantha calls on Hecate and hears the wild dogs at the gate. Dost thou remember Sicily? Still by the light and laughing sea, poor Polyphemy bemoans his fate, O singer of Persephone. And still in boyish rivalry, young Daphne challenges his mate. Dost thou remember Sicily? Slim Lacon keeps a goat for thee, for thee the jocund shepherds wait. In the Gold Room, a Harmony, from the poems of Oscar Wilde, by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org, by Thomas Peter. Her ivory hands on the ivory keys strayed in a fitful fantasy, like the silver gleam when the poplar trees rustled their pale leaves listlessly or the drifting foam of a restless sea when the waves show their teeth in the flying breeze her gold hair fell on the wall of gold like the delicate gossamer tangle spun on the burnished disk of the marigold or the sunflower turning to meet the sun when the gloom of the dark blue night is done and the spear of the lily is aureoled and her sweet red lips on these lips of mine burned like the ruby fire set and the swinging lamp of a crimson shrine or the bleeding wounds of the pomegranate or the heart of the lotus drenched and wet Ballade de Marguerite, Normande, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. I am weary of lying within the chase when the knights are meeting in market place. Nay, go not thou to the red-roofed town, lest the hoofs of the war-horse tread thee down. But I would not go where the squires ride; I would only walk by my lady's side. Alack, and alack, thou art overbold, A forest of sun may not eat off gold. Will she love me the less that my father is seen Each Martinmas day in a doublet green? Perchance she is sewing at tapestry, Spindle and loom are not meet for thee. Ah, if she is working the hours bright, I might ravel the threads by the firelight. Perchance she is hunting of the deer, how could you follow o'er hill and mere? Ah, if she is riding with the court, I might run beside her and wind the mort. The chance she is kneeling in Saint-Denis, On a soul may our lady have gramercy. Ah, if she is praying in lone chapelle, I might swing the censer and ring the bell. Come in, my son, for you look so pale, The father shall fill thee a stoop of ale. But who are these knights in bright array? Is it a pageant the rich folks play? Tis the king of England from oversea, Who has come on to visit our fair country. But why does the curfew toll say low, And why do the mourners walk a row? Oh, tis Hugh of Amir, my sister's son, Who is lying stark, for his day is done. Nay, nay, for I see white lilies clear, It is no strong man who lies on the bier. Oh, tis old Dame Jeanette that kept the hall. I knew she would die at the autumn fall. Dame Jeanette had not that gold-brown hair. Old Jeanette was not a maiden fair. Oh, tis none of our kith and none of our kin. Her soul may our lady a soil from sin. But I hear the boy's voice chanting sweet. Elle est morte la Marguerite. Come in, my son, and lie on the bed. 
and let the dead folk bury their dead oh mother you know i loved her true the dole of the king's daughter breton from the poems of oscar wilde by oscar wilde read for librivox dot org by thomas peter seven stars in the still water and seven in the sky seven sins on the king's daughter deep in her soul to lie red roses are at her feet roses are red in her red gold hair and o oh, where her bosom and girdle meet red roses are hidden there fair is the knight who lieth slain amid the rush and reed see the lean fishes that are fain upon dead men to feed sweet is the page that lieth there cloth of gold is goodly prey see the black ravens in the air black o oh, black as the night are they what do they there so stark and dead there is blood upon her hand why are the lilies flecked with red there is no blood on the river sand there are two that ride from the south and east and two from the north and west for the black raven a goodly feast for the king's daughter rest there is one man who loves her true red oh red is a stain of gore he hath dug in a grave by the darksome yew one grave will do for four no moon in the still heaven in the black water none the sins on her soul are Amor Intellectualis from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Oft have we trod the vales of Castaly And heard sweet notes of sylvan music blown From antique reeds to common folk unknown And often launched our bark upon that sea Which the nine muses hold in empery And ploughed free furrows through the wave and foam Nor spread reluctant sail for more safe home Till we had frighted well our argosy of which despoiled treasures these remain sordello's passion and the honeyed line of young endymion lordly tamburlaine driving his pampered jades and more than these the sevenfold vision of the florentine Santa Decca from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The gods are dead. No longer do we bring to grey-eyed palace crowns of olive leaves. Demeter's child no more hath tith of sheaves, And in the noon the careless shepherds sing, For Pan is dead, and all the wantoning By secret glade and devious haunt is o'er. Young Hylas seeks the water springs no more. Great Pan is dead, and Mary's son is king. And yet, perchance in the sea transit isle, chewing the bitter fruit of memory, some god lies hidden in the asphodel. Ah, love, if such there be, then it were well for us to fly his anger. Nay, but see, the leaves are stirring. A Vision From the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Two crowned kings, 
and one that stood alone with no green weight of laurels round his head but with sad eyes as one uncomforted and wearied with man's never-ceasing moan for sin's no bleating victim can atone and sweet long lips with tears and kisses fed girt was he in a garment black and red and at his feet i marked a broken stone which sent up lilies dove-like to his knees now at their sight my heart being lit with flame i cry to beatrice who are these and she made answer knowing well each name Aeschylus first the second sophocles and last wide Impression de Voyage from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The sea was sapphire-colored, and the sky burnt like a heated opal through the air. We hoisted sail, the wind was blowing fair, for the blue lands that to the eastward lie. From the steep prow I marked with quickening eyes Akinthos, every olive grove and creek, Ithaca's cliff, Lycaon's snowy peak, and all the flower-strewn hills of Arcady. The flapping of the sail against the mast, the ripple of the water on the side, the ripple of girls' laughter at the stern, the only sounds, when gan the west to burn, and a red sun upon the seas to ride. I stood The Grave of Shelley from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter like burnt-out torches by a sick man's bed, Gaunt cypress-trees stand round the sun-bleached stone. Here doth the little night-owl make her throne, And the slight lizard show his jewelled head. And, where the chaliced poppies flame to red, In the still chamber of yon pyramid, Surely some old-world sphinx lurks darkly hid, Grim warder of this pleasance of the dead. Ah, sweet indeed to rest within the womb of earth, Great mother of eternal sleep, But sweeter far for thee a restless tomb In the blue cavern of an echoing deep, Or where the tall ships founder in the gloom Against the rocks of some By the Arno, from the poems of Oscar Wilde, by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian. The oleander on the wall grows crimson in the dawning night, though the grey shadows of the light lie yet on Florence like a pall. The dew is bright upon the hill, and bright the blossoms overhead, but ah! The grasshoppers have fled, the little attic song is still. Only the leaves are gently stirred by the soft breathing of the gale, and in the almond-scented bell the lonely nightingale is heard. The day will make thee silent soon, O nightingale, sing on for love, while yet upon the shadowy grove splinter the arrows of the moon. Before across the silent lawn, in sea-green mist the morning steals, and to love's frightened eyes reveals the long white fingers of the dawn. Fast climbing up the eastern sky to grasp and slay the shuddering night, all careless of my heart's delight.
Fabien de Franchi to my friend Henry Irving from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Lian. The silent room, the heavy creeping shade, the dead that travel fast, the opening door, the murdered brother rising through the floor, the ghost's white fingers on thy shoulders laid, and then the lonely duel in the glade, the broken swords, the stifled scream, the gore, thy grand revengeful eyes when all is over. These things are well enough, but thou wert made for more august creation. Frenzied Lear should at thy bidding wander on the heath, with a shrill fool to mock him. Romeo for thee should lure his love and desperate fear. Pluck Richard's recreant dagger from his sheath, though. Fêtre, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Lian. How vain and dull this common world must seem to such a one as thou who shouldst have talked at Florence with Mirandola, or walked through the cool olives of the Academe, thou shouldst have gathered reeds from a green stream for goat food pans shrill piping and have played with the white girls in the phaeacian glade where grave odysseus wakened from his dream ah surely once some urn of attic clay held thy wane dust and thou hast come again back to this common world so dull and vain for thou wert weary of the sunless day the heavy fields of scentless asphodel Portia, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. I marvel not Bassanio was so bold to peril all he had upon the lead, or that proud Aragon bent low his head, or that Morocco's fiery heart grew cold, for in that gorgeous dress of beaten gold, which is more golden than the golden sun no woman veronese looked upon was half so fair as thou whom i behold yet fair when with wisdom as your shield the sober suited lawyer's gown you donned and will not let the laws of venice yield antonio's heart to that accursed jew o oh, portia take my heart Queen Henrietta Maria, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. In the lone tent, waiting for victory, she stands with eyes marred by the mists of pain, like some wan lily overdrenched with rain. The clamorous clang of arms, the ensanguined sky, war's ruin, and the wreck of chivalry, to our proud soul no common fear can bring. Bravely she tarrieth for her lord the king, her soul aflame with passionate ecstasy. O oh, hair of gold, O oh, crimson lips, O oh, face made for the luring and the love of man, With thee I do forget the toil and stress, The loveless road that knows no resting place, Time's straitened pulse, the soul's dread wind. Kama, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. 
as one who pouring on a grecian urn scans the fair shapes some attic hand hath made god with slim goddess goodly man with maid and for their beauty's sake is loth to turn and face the obvious day must i not yearn for many a secret moon of indolent bliss when in the minmost shrine of artemis i see thee standing antiglimmed and stern and yet methinks i'd rather see thee play that serpent of old nile whose witchery made emperors drunken come great egypt shake our stage with all thy mimic pageants nay i am grown sick of unreal passions Panthea, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Nay, let us walk from fire unto fire, from passionate pain to deadlier delight. I am too young to live without desire. Too young art thou to waste this summer night, asking those idle questions which of old man sought of seer and oracle and no reply was told for sweet to feel is better than to know and wisdom is a childless heritage one pulse of passion youth's first fiery glow are worth the hoarded proverbs of the sage vex not thy soul with dead philosophy have we not lips to kiss with hearts to love and eyes to see Dost thou not hear the murmuring nightingale, Like water bubbling from a silver jar? So soft she sings the envious moon is pale, That high in heaven she is hung so far, She cannot hear that love-enraptured tune. Mark how she wreathes each horn with mist, Yon late and labouring moon. White lilies, in whose cups the gold bees dream, The fallen snow of petals where the breeze Scatters the chestnut blossom, Or the gleam of boyish limbs in water, Are not these enough for thee? Dost thou desire more? Alas, the gods will give naught else From their eternal store. For our high gods have sick and wearied grown Of all our endless sins, our vain endeavour for wasted days of youth to make atone by pain or prayer or priest and never never hearken they now to either good or ill but send their rain upon the just and the unjust at will they sit at ease our gods they sit at ease strewing with leaves of rose their scented wine they sleep, they sleep, beneath the rocking trees, Where asphodel and yellow lotus twine, Mourning the old glad days before they knew What evil things the heart of man could dream, And dreaming do. And far beneath the brazen floor they see, Like swarming flies, the crowd of little men, The bustle of small lives, then wearily back to their lotus haunts they turn again kissing each other's mouths and mix more deep the poppy-seeded draught which brings soft purple-lidded sleep there all day long the golden vestured sun their torch-bearer stands with his torch ablaze and when the gaudy web of noon is spun by its twelve maidens through the crimson haze fresh from endymion's arms comes forth the moon and the immortal gods in toils of mortal passion swoon there walks queen juno through some dewy mead her grand white feet flecked with the saffron dust of wind-stirred lilies while young ganymede leaps in the hot and amber foaming must his curls all tossed as when the eagle bear the frightened boy from eda through the blue ionian air there in the green heart of some garden close queen venus with a shepherd at her side her warm soft body like the briar rose which would be white yet blushes at its pride laughs low for love till jealous selmachus peers through the myrtle leaves and sighs for pain of lonely bliss there never does that dreary north wind blow which leaves our english forests bleak and bare nor ever falls the swift white-feathered snow 
nor doth the red-toothed lightning ever dare to wake them in the silver-fretted night when we lie weeping for some sweet sad sin some dead delight alas they know the far lethean spring the violet hidden waters well they know where one whose feet with tired wandering are faint and broken may take heart and go and from those dark depths cool and crystalline drink and draw balm and sleep for sleepless souls and anodyne but we oppress our natures god or fate is our enemy we starve and feed on vain repentance oh we are born too late what balm for us in bruised poppy seed who crowd into one finite pulse of time the joy of infinite love and the fierce pain of infinite crime oh we are wearied of the sense of guilt wearied of pleasure's paramour despair wearied of every temple we have built wearied of every right unanswered prayer for man is weak god sleeps and heaven is high one fiery colored moment one great love and lo we die ah but no fairy man with laboring pole nears his black shallop to the flowerless strand no little coin of bronze can bring the soul over death's river to the sunless land victim and wine and vow are all in vain the tomb is sealed the soldiers watch the dead rise not again we are resolved into the supreme air we are made one with what we touch and see with our heart's blood each crimson sun is fair with our young lives each spring in passion tree flames into green the wildest beasts that range the moor our kinsmen are all life is one and all is change with beat of systole and of diastole one grand great life throbs through earth's giant heart and mighty waves of single being roll from nerveless germ to man for we are part of every rock and bird and beast and hill one with the things that prey on us and one with what we kill from lower cells of waking life we pass to full perfection thus the world grows old we who are godlike now were once a mass of quivering purple flecked with bars of gold unsentient or of joy or misery and tossed in terrible tangles of some wild and wind-swept sea this hot hard flame with which our bodies burn will make some meadow blaze with daffodil ay and those argent breasts of thine will turn to water lilies the brown fields men till will be more fruitful for our love to-night nothing is lost in nature all things live in death's despite the boy's first kiss the hyacinth's first bell the man's last passion and the last red spear that from the lily leaps the asphodel which will not let its blossoms blow for fear of too much beauty and the timid shame of the young bridegroom at his lover's eyes these with the same one sacrament are consecrate the earth not we alone hath passions hymeneal the yellow buttercups that shake for mirth at daybreak know a pleasure not less real than we do when in some fresh blossoming wood we draw the spring into our hearts and feel that life is good so when men bury us beneath the yew thy crimson stained mouth a rose will be and thy soft eyes lush bluebells dimmed with dew and when the white narcissus wantonly kisses the wind its playmate some faint joy will thrill our dust and we will be again fond maid and boy and thus without life's conscious torturing pain in some sweet flower we will feel the sun and from the linnet's throat will sing again and as two gorgeous mailed snakes will run over our graves or as two tigers creep through the hot jungle where the yellow-eyed huge lions sleep and give them battle how my heart leaps up to think of that grand living after death in beast and bird and flower when this cup being filled too full of spirit bursts for breath and with the pale leaves of some autumn day the soul earth's earliest conqueror becomes earth's last great prey 
Oh, think of it. We shall inform ourselves into all sensuous life, the goat-foot fawn, the centaur, or the merry bright-eyed elves that leave their dancing rings to spite the dawn upon the meadows, shall not be more near than you and I to nature's mysteries, for we shall hear the thrush's heart-beat, and the daisies grow, and the wan snowdrop sighing for the sun on sunless days in winter. We shall know by whom the silver gossamer is spun, who paints the diapered fritillaries, on what wide wings from shivering pine to pine the eagle flies. I, had we never loved at all, who knows if yonder daffodil had lured the bee into its gilded womb, or any rose had hung with crimson lamps its little tree. Methinks no leaf would ever bud in spring, but for the lover's lips that kiss, the poet's lips that sing. Is the light vanished from our golden sun, or is this date all fashioned earth less fair, that we are nature's heritors, and one with every pulse of life that beats the air? Rather new suns across the sky shall pass, new splendor come unto the flower, new glory to the grass. And we two lovers shall not sit afar, critics of nature, but the joy sea shall be our raiment, and the bearded star shoot arrows at our pleasure. We shall be part of the mighty universal whole, and through all eons mix and mingle with the cosmic soul. We shall be notes in that great symphony, whose cadence circles through the rhythmic spheres, and all the live world's throbbing heart shall be one with our heart. The stealthy, creeping years have lost their terrors now. We shall not die. Impression Le Réveillon From the Poems of Oscar Wilde By Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org By Lian the sky is laced with fitful red and circling mists and shadows flee the dawn is rising from the sea like a white lady from her bed and jagged brazen arrows fall athwart the feathers of the night and a long wave of yellow light breaks silently on tower and hall and spreading wide across the world wakes into flight some fluttering bird and all the chestnuts At Verona, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. How steep the stairs within kings' houses are, for exile-wearied feet is mine to tread, and oh, how salt and bitter is the bread which falls from this hound's table! Better far that I had died in the red ways of war, or that at the gate of Florence bear my head, than to live thus by all things comraded, which seek the essence of my soul to mar. Curse God and die, what better hope than this? He hath forgotten thee in all the bliss of his gold city and eternal day. Nay, peace, behind my prison's blinded bars I do possess what none can take away. Apologia, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Is it thy will that I should wax and wane, barter my cloth of gold for a hodden grey, and at thy pleasure weave that web of pain whose brightest threads are each a wasted day? Is it thy will, love that I love so well, that my soul's house should be a tortured spot wherein, like evil paramours, must dwell the quenchless flame, the worm that dieth not? Nay, if it be thy will, I shall endure, and sell ambition at the common mart, and let dull failure be my vestiture, and sorrow dig its grave within my heart. 
Perchance it may be better so, at least I have not made my heart a heart of stone, nor starved my boyhood of its goodly feast, nor walked where beauty is a thing unknown. Many a man hath done so, sought to fence and straighten bonds the soul that should be free, trodden the dusty road of common sense, while all the forest sang of liberty, not marking how the spotted hawk in flight passed on wide pinion through the lofty air, to where some steep untrodden mountain height caught the last tresses of the sun-god's hair, or how the little flower he trod upon, the daisy, that white-feathered shield of gold, followed with wistful eyes the wandering sun, content if once its leaves were aureoled. But surely it is something to have been the best beloved for a little while, to have walked hand in hand with love, and seen his purple wings flit once across thy smile. I, though the gorged asp of passion feed on my boy's heart, yet have I burst the bars, stood face to face with beauty, known indeed the Quia multum amavi, from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Dear heart, I think the young impassioned priest, when first he takes from out the hidden shrine his God imprisoned in the Eucharist, and eats the bread and drinks the dreadful wine. Feels not such awful wonder as I felt When first my smitten eyes beat full on thee, And all night long before thy feet I knelt, Till thou wert wearied of idolatry. Ah, hadst thou liked me less and loved me more, Through all those summer days of joy and rain, I had not now been sorrow's heritor, Or stood a lackey in the house of pain. Yet, though remorse, youth's, White-faced seneschal, tread on my heels with all his retinue. I am most glad I loved thee. Silentio Mamoris From the Poems of Oscar Wilde By Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Lian. As oftentimes the too resplendent sun hurries the pallid and reluctant moon back to her sombre cave ere she hath won a single ballad from the nightingale, so doth thy beauty make my lips to fail and all my sweetest singing out of tune. And as at dawn across the level mead, On winds impetuous some wind will come, And with its two harsh kisses break the reed, Which was its only instrument of song. So my two stormy passions work me wrong, And for excess of love my love is dumb. But surely unto thee my eyes did show Why I am silent and my lute unstrung. Else it were better we should part and go, Though to some lips of sweeter melody, And I to nurse the barren memory Of unkissed kisses. Her voice from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian. The wild bee reels from bough to bough with his furry coat and his gauzy wing, now in the lily cup and now, sitting adjacent bell a swing, is wandering. Sit closer, love, it was here a trial I made at bow. Swore that two lives should be like one, as long as the sea gull loved the sea, as long as the sunflower sought the sun, it shall be, I said, for eternity, twixt you and me, dear friend. Those times are over and done, love's web is spun. Look upward, where the poplar trees sway and sway in the summer air, 
here in the valley never a breeze scatters the thistle down but there great winds blow fair from the mighty murmuring mystical seas and the wave lashed leaves look upward when the white ghost screams what does it see that we do not see is that a star or the lamp that gleams on some outward voyage in argosy ah can it be we have lived our lives in a land of dreams how sad it seems sweet there is nothing left to say but this that love is never lost king winter stabs the breasts of may whose crimson roses burst his frost ships tempest tossed will find a harbor in some bay and so we may and there is nothing left to do but to kiss once again and part nay there is nothing we should rue i have my beauty you your art nay do not start one world was not in my voice from the poems of oscar wilde by oscar wilde bread for librivox dot org by thomas peter within this restless hurried modern world we took our hearts as full pleasure you and i and now the white sails of our ship are furled and spent the lading of our argosy wherefore my cheeks before their time are wan for very weeping is my gladness fled sorrow has paled my young mouth's vermilion and ruin draws the curtains of my bed but all this crowded life has been to thee no more than lyre or lute or subtle spell of vials or the music of Tedium Vitae from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter To stab my youth with desperate knives, to wear this paltry age's gaudy livery, to let each base hand filch my treasury, to mesh my soul within a woman's hair, and be mere fortune's lackeyed groom, I swear I love it not. These things are less to me than the thin foam that frets upon the sea, less than the thistle-down of summer air which hath no seed. Better to stand aloof, far from these slanderous fools who mock my life, knowing me not. Better the lowliest roof, fit for the meanest hind to sojourn in, than to go back to that hoarse cave of strife, where Humanitat, from the poems of Oscar Wilde, by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian. It is full winter now, the trees are bare, save where the cattle huddle from the cold, beneath the pine, for it doth never wear, the autumn's gaudy livery, whose gold her jealous brother pilfers, but is true to the green doublet bitter is the wind as though it blew from saturn's cave a few thin wisps of hay lie on the sharp black hedges where the wain dragged the sweet pillage of a summer's day from the low meadows up the narrow lane upon the half-thawed snow the bleating sheep press close against the hurdles and the shivering house-dogs creep from the shut stable to the frozen stream and back again disconsolate and miss the bawling shepherds and the noisy team and overhead in circling listlessness the cawing rooks whirl round the frosted stack or crowd the dripping boughs and in a fan the ice pools crack 
where the gaunt bittern stalks among the reeds and flaps his wings and stretches back his neck and who's to see the moon across the meads limps the poor frightened hare a little speck and a stray sea-mew with his fretful cry flits like a sudden drift of snow against the dull grey sky full winter and the lusty goodman brings his load of faggots from the chilly byre and stamps his feet upon the hearth and flings the sappy billets on the waning fire and laughs to see the sudden lightning scare his children at their play and yet the spring is in the air already the slim crocus stirs the snow and soon yon blanched fields will bloom again with nodding cowslips for some lad to mow for with the first warm kisses of the rain the winter's icy sorrow breaks to tears and the brown thrush is made and with bright eyes the rabbit peers from the dark warren where the fir cones lie and treads one snowdrop underfoot and runs over the mossy knoll and blackbirds fly across our path at evening and the suns stay longer with us ah how good to see grass-girdled spring in all her joy of laughing greenery dance through the hedges till the early rose that sweet repentance of the thorny briar burst from its sheathed emerald and disclose the little quivering disk of golden fire which the bees know so well for with it come pale boy's love sobs in wine and daffodillies all in bloom then up and down the field the sower goes while close behind a laughing yonker scares with shrilly whoop the black and thievish crowds and then the chestnut tree its glory wears and on the grass the creamy blossom falls in odorous excess and faint half-whispered madrigals steal from the bluebells nodding carillons each breezy morn and then white jessamine the star of his own heaven snapdragons with lolling crimson tongues and eglantine in dusty velvets clad usurp the bed and woodland empery and when the lingering rose hath shed red leaf by leaf is folded panoply and pansies close their purple lidded eyes chrysanthemums from gilded argosy unload their gaudy scentless merchandise and violets getting overbold withdraw from their shy nooks and scarlet berries dot the leafless hall oh happy field and oh thrice happy tree soon will your queen in daisy flowered smock and crown of flower de look trip down the lee soon will the lazy shepherds drive their flock back to the pasture by the pool and soon through the green leaves will float the hum of murmuring bees at noon soon will the glade be bright with bellamore the flower which wantons love and those sweet nuns well lilies in their snowy vesture will tell their beaded pearls and carnations with mitre dusky leaves will scent the wind and strangling travellers joy each hedge with yellow stars will blind dear bride of nature and most bounteous spring that canst give increase to the sweet-breathed kine and to the kid its little horns and bring the soft and silky blossoms to the vine where is that old nepenthe which of yore man got from poppy root and glossy buried mandragore there was a time when any common bird could make me sing in unison a time when all the strings of boyish life were stirred to quick response or more melodious rhyme by every forest ideal do i change or rather doth some evil thing through thy fair pleasance range nay nay thou art the same this i who seek to vex with signs thy simple solitude and because fruitless tears bedew my cheek would have thee weep with me in brotherhood fool shall each wronged and restless spirit dare to taint such wine with salt poison of his own despair 
thou art the same this i whose wretched soul takes discontent to be its paramour and gives its kingdom to the rude control of what should be its servitor for sure wisdom is somewhere though the stormy sea contain it not and the huge deep answer there's not in me to burn with one clear flame to stand erect in natural honour not to bend the knee in profitless prostrations whose effect is by itself condemned what alchemy can teach me this what herb medea brewed will bring the unexultant peace of essence not subdued the minor chord which ends the harmony and for its answering brother waits in vain sobbing for incompleted melody dies a swan's death but i the heir of pain a silent memnon with blank lidless eyes wait for the light and the music of the sun which never rise the quenched out torch the lonely cypress gloom the little dust stored in the narrow urn the gentle sheep of the attic tomb were not these better far than to return to my old fitful restless malady or spend my days within the voiceless cave of misery nay for perchance that poppy-crowned god is like the watcher by a sick man's bed who talks of sleep but gives it not his rod hath lost his virtue and when all is said death is too rude too obvious a key to solve one single secret in a life's philosophy and love that noble madness whose august and inextinguishable might can slay the soul with honeyed drugs alas i must from such sweet ruin play the runaway although too constant memory never can forget the arched splendour of those brows olympian which for a little season made my youth so soft a swoon of exquisite indolence that all the chiding of more prudent truth seemed in thin voice of jealousy o oh, hence the huntress deadlier than artemis go seek some other quarry for of thy too perilous bliss my lips have drunk enough no more no more though love himself should turn his gilded prow back to the troubled waters of this shore where i am wrecked and stranded even now two chariot wheels of passion sweep too near hence hence i pass unto a life more barren more austere more barren ay those arms will never lean down through the trellised vines and draw my soul in sweet reluctance through the tangled green some other head must wear that aureole for i am hers who loves not any man whose white and stainless bosom bears the sign gorgonian let venus go and chuck her dainty page and kiss his mouth and toss his curly hair with net and spare and hunting equipage let young adonis to his tryst repair but me her fond and subtle fashion spell delights no more though i could wing her dearest citadel ay though i were that laughing shepherd boy who from mount ida saw the little cloud pass over tenedos and lofty troy and knew the coming of the queen and bowed in wonder at her feet not for the sake of a new helen would i bid her hand the apple take then rise supreme athena argent limbed and if my lips be musicless inspire at least my life was not thy glory hymned by one who gave to thee his sword and lyre like aeschylus at well-fought marathon and died to show that milton's england still could bear a song and yet i cannot tread the portico and live without desire fear and pain or nurture that wise calm which long ago the grave athenian master taught to men self-poised self-centred and self-comforted to watch the world's vain fantasies go by with unbowed head alas the serene brow 
those eloquent lips those eyes that mirrored all eternity rest in their own colonus and eclipse hath come on wisdom and mnemosyne is childless in the night which she had made for love to secure flight athena's owl itself hath strayed nor much with science do i care to climb although by strange and subtle witchery she draw the moon from heaven the muse of time unrolls her gorgeous colored tapestry to no less eager eyes often indeed in the great epic of polymnia's scroll i love to read how asia sent a myriad hosts to war against the little town and panoplied in gilded mail with jewelled scimitar white shielded purple crested rode the mead between the waving poplars and the sea which men call artemisium to his saw thermopylae a steep ravine spanned by a narrow wall and on the nearer side the little brood of careless lions holding festival and stood amazed at such hardihood and pitched his tent upon the reedy shore and stayed two days to wander and then crept at midnight o'er some unfrequented height and coming down the autumn forest treacherously slew was sparta held most dear and was the crown of far eurotas and passed on nor knew how god has staked an evil net for him in the small bay of salamis and yet the page grows dim its cadenced greek delights me not i feel with such a goodly time too out of tune to love it much for like the dial's wheel that from its blinded darkness strikes the noon yet never sees the sun so do my eyes restlessly follow that which from my cheat vision flies oh for one grand unselfish simple life to teach us what is wisdom speaky hills of long howling for this note of strife shunned your untroubled crags and crystal rills where is that spirit which living blamelessly yet dare to kiss the smitten mouth of his own century speak ye rydalian laurels where is he whose gentle head ye sheltered that pure soul whose gracious days of uncrowned majesty through lowliest conduct touched the lofty goal where love and duty mingle him at least the most high laws were glad of he had sat at wisdom's feast but we are learning's changlings now by rote the clarion watchword of each grecian school and follow none the flawless sword which smote the pagan hydra is an effect tool which we ourselves have blunted what man now shall scale the ox's ancient heights and to old reverence bow one such indeed i saw but echabod gone is that last dear son of italy who being man died for the sake of god and whose unrisen bones sleep peacefully o oh, guard him guard him well my giotto's tower though marble lily of the lily town let not the lower of the rude tempest vex his slumber or the arno with his tawny troubled gold overleap his march no mightier conqueror clomb the high capital in the days of old when rome was indeed rome for liberty walked like a bride beside him at which sight pale misery fled shrieking to her father's sombrous cell with an old man who gravelled rusty keys fled shuddering for that immemorial knell with which oblivion buries dynasties swept like a wounded eagle on the blast as to the holy heart of rome the great triumvir passed he knew the holiest heart and heights of rome he drave the base wolf from the lion's lair and now lies dead by that empyreal dome which overtops Vardarno hung in air by Brunelliaki, o my Pomini, breathe through thy melancholy pipe thy sweetest threnody breathe through the tragic stop such melodies that joy's self may grow jealous 
and then i forget awhile their discreet emperies mourning for him who on rome's lordiest shrine lit for men's lives the light of marathon and bare to some forgotten fields the fire of the sun o oh, guard him guard him well my giotto's tower let some young florentine each eventide bring coronals of that enchanted flower which the dim woods of valombrosa hide and deck the marble tomb where he lies whose soul is as some mighty orb unseen of mortal eyes some mighty orb whose cycled wanderings being tempest-driven to the farthest rim where chaos meet creation and the winds of the internal chanting cherubim are pavilioned on nothing cast away into the moonless void and yet though he is dust and clay he is not dead the immemorial fates forbid it and the closing shears of refrain lift up your heads ye everlasting gates ye argent clarions sound a loftier strain for the vile thing he hated lurks within its sombre house alone with god and memories of sin still what avails it that she sought her cave that murderous mother of red harlotries at munich on the marble architrave the grecian boys die smiling but the seas which wash aegina fret in loneliness no mirror in their beauty so our lives grow colourless for lack of our ideals if one star flame torchlight in the heavens the unjust swift daylight kills it and no trump of war can wake to passionate voice the silent dust which was mazzini once rich niobe for all her stony sorrows hath her songs but italy what easter day shall make her children rise who are not gods yet suffered what sure feet shall find their grave claws folded what clear eyes shall see them bodily oh it were meet to roll the stone from off the sepulchre and kiss the bleeding roses of their wounds in love of her our italy our mother visible most blessed among nations and most sad for whose dear sake the young calabrian fell that day at aspromonte and was glad that in an age when god was bought and sold one man could die for liberty but we burnt out and cold see honour smitten on the cheek and guides bind the sweet feet of mercy poverty creeps through our sunless lanes and with sharp knives cuts the warm throats of children stealthily and no word said ah we are wretched men unworthy of our great inheritance where is the pen of austere milton where the mighty sword which slew its master righteously the years have lost their ancient leader and no word breaks from the voiceless tripod on our ears while as a ruined mother in some spasm bears a base child and loathes it so our best enthusiasm genders on law for children anarchy freedom's own judas the vile prodigal license who steals the gold of liberty and yet has nothing ignorance the real one fratricide since cain envied the asp that stains itself to anguish avarice whose palsied grasp is in its extent stiffened moneyed greed for whose dull appetite men waste away amid the whirl of wheels and are the seed of things which slay their soul these each day seas rifle in england and the gentle feet of beauty tread no more the stones of each unlovely street what even cromwell spared is desecrated by weed and worm left to the stormy play of wind and beating snow or renovated by more destructful hands time's worst decay will wreathe its ruins with some loveliness but these new vandals can but make a rain-proof barrenness where is that art which bade the angel sing through lincoln's lofty choir 
till the air seems from such marble harmonies to ring with sweeter song than common lips can dare to draw from actual reed ah where is now the cunning hand which made the flowering hawthorn branches bow for south wales arch and carved the house of one who loved the lilies of the field with all our dearest english flowers the same sun rises for us the seasons natural weave the same tapestry of green and grey the unchanged hills are with us but that spirit hath passed away and yet perchance it may be better so for tyranny is an incestuous queen murder her brother is her bedfellow and the plague chambers with her in obscene and bloody paths her treacherous feet are set better the empty desert and a soul inviolate for gentle brotherhood the harmony of living in the healthy air the swift clean beauty of strong limbs where men are free and women chaste these are the things which lift our souls up more than even agnolo's gaunt blinded sibyl pouring over the scroll of human woes or titan's little maiden on the stair white as her own sweet lily and as tall or mona lisa smiling through her hair ah somehow life is bigger after all than any painted angel could we see the god that is within us the old greek serenity which curbs the passion of that level line of marble youths who with untroubled eyes and chastened limbs ride round athena's shrine and mirror her divine economies and balance the symmetry of what in man would else wage ceaseless warfare this at least within the span between our mother's kisses and the grave might so inform our lives that we could win such mighty empires that from her cave temptation would grow hoarse and pallid sin would walk ashamed of his adulteries and passion creep from out the house of lust with startled eyes to make the body and the spirit one with all right things to no thing live in vain from morn to noon but in sweet unison with every pulse of flesh and throb of brain the soul in flawless essence high enthroned against all outer vain attack invincibly bastioned mark with serene impartiality the strife of things and yet be comforted knowing that by the chain causality all separate existences are wed into one supreme whole whose utterance is joy or holier praise ah surely this were governance of life in most august omnipresence through which the rational intellect would find in passion its expression and mere sense ignoble else lend fire to the mind and being joined with it in harmony more mystical than that which binds the stars planetary strike from their several tones one octave chord whose cadence being measureless would fly through all the circling spheres then to its lord return refreshed with his new empery and more exultant power this indeed could we but reach it were to find the last the perfect creed ah it was easy when the world was young to keep one's life free and inviolate from our sad lips another song is wrung by our own hands our heads are desecrate wanderers in drear exile and dispossessed of what should be our own we can but feed on wild unrest somehow the grace the bloom of things has flown and of all men we are most wretched who must live each other's lives and not our own for very pity's sake and then undo all that we lived for it was otherwise when soul and body seemed to blend in mystic symphonies but we have left those gentle haunts to pass with weary feet the new cavalry 
where we behold as one who in a glance sees his own face self-slain humanity and in the dumb reproach of that sad gaze learn what an awful phantom the red hand of man can raise or smitten mouth or forehead crowned with thorn o chalice of all common miseries though for our sakes the love thee not hast borne an agony of endless centuries and we were vain and ignorant nor knew that when we stabbed thy heart it was our own real hearts we slew been ourselves the sowers and the seas the night that covers and the lights that fade the spear and the pierces and the side that bleeds the lips betraying and the life betrayed that deep hath calm the moon hath rest but we lords of the natural world are yet our own dread enemy is this the end of all that primal force which in its changes been still the same from eyeless chaos cleft its upward course through ravenous seas and whirling rocks and flame till the suns met in heaven and began their circles and the morning stars sang and the world was man nay nay we are but crucified and though the bloody sweat falls from our brows like rain loosen the nails we shall come down i know staunch the red wounds we shall be whole again no need have we of his laden rod the which is purely human that is godlike flower of love from the poems of oscar wilde by oscar wilde read for librivox dot org by lian sweet i blame you not for mine the fault was had i not been made of common clay i had climbed the higher heights unclimbed yet seen the fuller air the larger day from the wildness of my wasted passion i had struck a better clearer song lit some lighter light of freer freedom battled with some hydra-headed wrong had my lips been smitten into music by the kisses that but made them bleed you had walked with bias and the angels on that verdant and enamelled mead i had trod the road which dante treading saw the suns of seven circles shine i perchance had seen the heavens opening as they opened to the florentine and the mighty nations would have crowned me who i am crownless now and without name and some orient dawn had found me kneeling on the threshold of the house of fame i had sat within that marble circle where the oldest bard is as the young and the pipe is ever dropping honey and the lyre's strings are ever strong keats had lifted up his hymeneal curls from out the poppy-seeded wine with ambrosial mouth had kissed my forehead clasped the hand of noble love in mine and at springtide when the apple blossoms brush the burnished bosom of the dove two young lovers lying in an orchard would have read the story of our love would have read the legend of my passion known the bitter secret of my heart kissed as we have kissed but never parted as we two are fated now to part for the crimson flower of our life is eaten by the canker worm of truth and no hand can gather up the fallen withered petals of the rose of youth yet i am not sorry that i loved you ah what else had i a boy to do for the hungry teeth of time devour and the silent-footed years pursue rudderless we drift othward a tempest and while once the storm of youth is past without lyre without lute or choirs death a silent pilot comes at last 
and within the grave there is no pleasure for the blind worm battens on the root and desire shudders into ashes and the tree of passion bears no fruit ah oh, what else had i to do but love you god's own mother was less dear to me and less dear the cytherea rising like an argent lily from the sea i have made my choice have lived my poems and though youth is gone in wasted days i have found the lover's crown of myrtle better than The Swings from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter and Leanne In a dim corner of my room for longer than my fancy thinks A beautiful and silent sphinx is watching me through the shifting gloom In violet and immobile she does not rise, she does not stir For silver moons are not to her and not to her are the suns that reel. Red follows gray across the air, the waves of moonlight ebb and flow, but with the dawn she does not go, and in the night time she is there. Dawn follows dawn, and nights grow old, and all the while this curious cat lies crouching on the Chinese mat with eyes of satin rimmed with gold. Upon the mat she lies and leers, and on the tawny throat of her flutters a soft and silky fur, or ripples to her pointed ears. Come forth, my lovely seneschal, so somnolent, so statuesque. Come forth, you exquisite grotesque, half woman and half animal. Come forth, my lovely languorous sphinx, and put your head upon my knee. And let me stroke your throat, and see your body spotted like the lynx. And let me touch those curving claws of yellow ivory, and grasp with a tail that like a monstrous asp coils round your heavy velvet paws. A thousand weary centuries are thine, while I have hardly seen. Some twenty summers cast their green for autumn's gaudy liveries. But you can read the hieroglyphs on the great sandstone obelisks and you have talked with basilisks and you have looked on hippogriffs oh tell me were you standing by while isis to osiris knelt and did you watch the egyptian mount her union for antony and drink the jewel drunken wine and bend her head in mimic awe to see the huge proconsul draw the sorted tunny from the brine and did you mark the Cyprian kiss, white adorn on his catafalque? And did you follow Aminoch, the god of Heliopolis? And did you talk with Thoth? And did you hear the moon-horned isle weep? And know the painted kings who sleep beneath the wedge-shaped pyramid? Lift up your large black satin eyes, which are like cushions where one sinks. Fawn at my feet, fantastic sphinx, and sing me all your memories. Sing to me of the Jewish maid who wandered with the holy child, and how you led them through the wild, and how they slept beneath your shade. Sing to me of that odorous green eve when, couching by the marge, you heard from Adrian's gilded barge the laughter of Antinous, and lapped the stream, and fed your drouth, and watched with hot and hungry stare the ivory body of that rare young slave with his pomegranate mouth. Sing to me of the labyrinth in which the twy-formed bull was stalled. Sing to me of the night you crawled across the temple's granite plinth, when through the purple corridors a screaming scarlet ibis flew in terror, and a horrid dew dripped from the moaning mandragoras, and the great torpid crocodile within the tank shed slimy tears, and tear the jewels from his ears, and staggered back into the Nile, and the priests cursed you with shrill psalms, as in your claws you seized their snake, and crept away with it to slake your passion by the shuddering palms. Who were your lovers? Who were they who wrestled for you in the dust? 
which was the vessel of your lust what liman had you every day the giant lizards come and crouch before you on the reedy banks did griffins with great metal flanks leap on you in your trampled couch did monstrous hippopotami come sliding towards you in the mist did gilt-scaled dragons writhe and twist with passion as you passed them by and from the brick-built lycian tomb what horrible chimera came with fearful heads and fearful flame to breed new wonders from your womb or had you shameful secret quests and did you hurry to your home some near it coiled in amber foam with curious rock crystal breasts or did you treading through the froth call to the brown sidonian for tidings of leviathan leviathan of behemoth or did you when the sun was set climb up the cactus covered slope to meet your swarthy ethiope whose body was of polished jet or did you while the earthen skiffs dropped down the grey nilotic flats and twilight and the flickering bats flew round the temple's triple glyphs steal to the border of the bar and swim across the silent lake and slink into the vault and make the pyramid your lupena till from each black sarcophagus rose up the painted swathed dead or did you lure unto your bed the ivory-horned tragelaphos or did you love the god of flies who plagued the hebrews and was splashed with wine unto the waist or pashed who had green barrels for her eyes or that young god the tyrian who was more amorous than the dove of ashtaroth or did you love the god of assyrian whose wings like strange transparent talc rose high above his hawk-faced head painted with silver and with red and ribbed with rods of auricalc or did huge apis from his car leap down and lay before your feet big blossoms of the honey sweet and honey-coloured nenuphar how subtle secret is your smile did you love none then nay i know great ammon was your bedfellow he lay with you beside the nile the river horses and the slime trumpeted when they saw him come odorous with syrian galbanum and smeared with spikenard and with thyme he came along the river bank like some tall galley argent sailed he strolled across the waters mailed in beauty and the waters sank he strode across the desert sand he reached the valley where you lay he waited till the dawn of day then touched your black breasts with his hand you kissed his mouth with mouths of flame you made the horned god your own you stood behind him on his throne you called him by his secret name you whispered monstrous oracles into the caverns of his ears with blood of goats and blood of steers you taught him monstrous miracles white ammon was your bedfellow your chamber was the steaming nile and with your curved archaic smile you watched his passion come and go with cereal oils his brows were bright and widespread as a tent at noon his marble limbs made pale the moon and lent the day a larger light his long hair was nine cubits span and coloured like that yellow gem which hidden in their garments hem the merchants bring from kurdistan his face was as the must that lies upon a vat of new-made wine the seas could not in suffering the perfect azure of his eyes his thick soft throat was white as milk and threaded with thin veins of blue and curious pearls like frozen dew were broidered on his flowing silk on pearl and porphyry pedestalled he was too bright to look upon for on his ivory breast there shone the wondrous ocean emerald that mystic moonlit jewel which some diver of the colchian caves had found beneath the blackening waves and carried to the colchian witch 
before his gilded galliot ran naked vine-wreathed corybants and lines of swaying elephants knelt down to draw his chariot and lines of swarthy nubians bear up his litter as he rode down the great granite paven road between the nodding peacock fans the merchants brought him steatite from sidon in their painted ships the meanest cup that touched his lips was fashioned from a chrysolite the merchants brought him cedar chests of rich apparel bound with cords his train was borne by memphian lords young kings were glad to be his guests ten hundred shaven priests did bow to ammon's altar day and night ten hundred lamps did wave their light through ammon's carven house and now foul snake and speckled adder with their young ones crawl from stone to stone for ruined is the house and prone the great rose-marble monolith wild ass or trotting jackal comes and couches in the mouldering gates wild satyrs call unto their mates across the fallen fluted drums and on the summit of the pile the blue-faced ape of horus sits and gibbers while the fig-tree splits the pillars of the peristyle the god is scattered here and there deep hidden in the windy sand i saw his giant granite hand still clenched in impotent despair and many a wandering caravan of stately negroes silken shod crossing the desert pods apart before the neck that none can span and many a bearded bedouin draws back his yellow striped burnous to gaze upon the titan thews of him who was thy paladin go seek his fragments on the moor and wash them in the evening dew and from their pieces make anew thy mutilated paramour go seek them where they lie alone and from their broken pieces make thy bruised bedfellow and wake mad passions in the senseless stone charm his dull ear with syrian hymns he loved your body oh be kind pour spikenard on his hair and wind soft rows of linen round his limbs wind round his head the figured coins stained with red fruits those pallid lips weave purple from his shrunken hips and purple for his barren loins away to egypt have no fear only one god has ever died only one god has let his side be wounded by a soldier's spear but these thy lovers are not dead still by the hundred cubit gate dog-faced anubis sits in state with lotus lilies for thy head still from his chair of periphery gaunt memnon strains his lidless eyes across the empty land and cries each yellow morning unto thee and nihilus with his broken horn lies in his black and oozy bed and till thy coming will not spread his waters on the withering corn your lovers are not dead i know they will rise up and hear your voice and clash their cymbals and rejoice and run to kiss your mouth and so set wings upon your argosies set horses to your ebon car back to your nile or if you are grown sick of dead divinities follow some roving line spoor across the copper-coloured plain reach out and hail him by the mane and bid him be your paramour couch by his side upon the grass and set your white teeth in his throat and when you hear his dying note lash your long flanks of polished brass and take a tiger for your mate whose amber sides are flecked with black and ride upon his gilded back in triumph through the theban gate and toy with him in amorous jests and when he turns and snarls and gnaws oh smite him with your jasper claws and bruise him with your agate breasts why are you tarrying get hence i weary of your sullen ways i weary of your steadfast gaze your somnolent magnificence your horrible and heavy breath makes the light flicker in the lamp and on my brow i feel the damp and dreadful dews of night and death your eyes are like fantastic moons that shiver in some stagnant lake your tongue is like a scarlet snake that dances to fantastic tunes 
your pulse makes poisonous melodies and your black throat is like the hole left by some torch or burning coal on saracenic tapestries away the sulphur-colored stars are hurrying through the western gate away or it may be too late to climb their silent silver cars see the dawn shivers round the grey gilt dialed towers and the rain streams down each diamonded pane and blurs with tears the vanished day what snake-dressed fury fresh from hell with uncouth gestures and unclean stole from the poppy drowsy queen and led you to a student's cell what songless tongueless ghost of sin crept through the curtains of the night and saw my taper burning bright and knocked and bade you enter in are there not others more accursed whiter with leprosies than i are abana and far far dry that you come here to slake your thirst get hence you loathsome mystery hideous animal get hence you waken me each bestial sense you make me what i would not be you make my creed a barren sham you wake foul dreams of sensual life and atis with his blood-stained knife were better than the thing i am false sphinx false sphinx by reedy sticks old charon leaning on his oar waits for my coin Go thou before, and leave me to my crucifix, whose pallid burden, sick with pain, watches the world with wearied eyes, and weeps for every soul that dies. The Ballad of Reading Jail from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. In memoriam, C. T. W., sometime trooper of the Royal Horse Guards, Obeit H. M. Prison, Reading, Berkshire, July seventh, eighteen ninety-six. One. He did not wear his scarlet coat, for blood and wine are red, and blood and wine were on his hands when they found him with the dead, the poor dead woman whom he loved, and murdered in her bed. He walked amongst the trial men in a suit of shabby grey, a crooked cap was on his head, and his step seemed light and gay, but I never saw a man who looked so wistfully at the day. I never saw a man who looked with such a wistful eye upon that little tent of blue which prisoners call the sky, and at every drifting cloud that went with sails of silver by. I walked with other souls in pain within another ring, and was wondering if the man had done a great or little thing, when a voice behind me whispered low, That fellow's got to swing. Dear Christ! The very prison walls suddenly seemed to reel, and the sky above my head became like a cask of scorching steel, and though I was a soul in pain, my pain I could not feel. I only knew what hunted thought quickened his step, and why he looked upon the garish day with such a wistful eye. The man had killed the thing he loved, and so he had to die. Yet each man kills the thing he loves, by each let this be heard. Some do it with a bitter look, some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. Some kill their love when they are young, and some when they are old. Some strangle with the hands of lust, some with the hands of gold. The kindest use a knife, because the dead so soon grow cold. Some love too little, some too long, some sell and others buy. Some do the deed with many tears, and some without a sigh. For each man kills the thing he loves, yet each man does not die. He does not die a death of shame on a day of dark disgrace, nor have a noose about his neck nor a cloth upon his face, nor drop feet foremost through the floor into an empty space. 
he does not sit with silent men who watch him night and day who watch him when he tries to weep and when he tries to pray who watch him lest himself should rob the prison of its prey he does not wake at dawn to see dread figures throng his room the shivering chaplain robed in white the sheriff stern with gloom and the governor all in shiny black with the yellow face of doom he does not rise in piteous haste to put on convict clothes or some coarse-mouthed doctor gloats and notes each new and nerve-twitched pose fingering a watch whose little ticks are like horrible hammer-blows he does not know that sickening thirst that sands one's throat before the hangman with his gardener's glove slips through the padded door and binds one with three leathern thongs that the throat may thirst no more he does not bend his head to hear the burial office read nor while the terror of his soul tells him he is not dead cross his own coffin as he moves into the hideous shed he does not stare upon the air through a little roof of glass he does not pray with lips of clay for his agony to pass nor feel upon his shuddering cheek that kiss of caiaphas two six weeks our guardsmen walk the yard in the suit of shabby grey his cricket cap was on his head and his step seemed light and gay but I never saw a man who looked so wistfully at the day. I never saw a man who looked with such a wistful eye upon that little tent of blue which prisoners call the sky, and at every wandering cloud that trailed its raveled fleeces by. He did not wring his hands as do those witless men who dare to try to rear the changeling hope in the cave of black despair. He only looked upon the sun and drank the morning air. He did not wring his hands nor weep, nor did he peek or pine, but he drank the air as though it held some healthful anodyne. With open mouth he drank the sun as though it had been wine. And I and all the souls in pain who tramped the other ring forgot if we ourselves had done a great or little thing and watched with gaze of dull amaze the man who had to swing. And strange it was to see him pass with a step so light and gay, and strange it was to see him look so wistfully at the day, and strange it was to think that he had such a debt to pay. For oak and elm have pleasant leaves that in the springtime shoot, but grim to see is the gallows-tree with its adder-bitten root and green or dry a man must die before it bears its fruit the loftiest place is that seat of grace for which all worldlings try but who would stand in hempen band upon a scaffold high and through a murderer's collar take his last look at the sky it is sweet to dance to violins when love and life are fair to dance to flutes to dance to lutes is delicate and rare but it is not sweet with nimble feet to dance upon the air. So with curious eyes and sick surmise we watched him day by day, and wondered if each one of us would end the self-same way, for none can tell to what red hell his sightless soul may stray. At last the dead man walked no more amongst the trial men, and I knew that he was standing up in the black dock's dreadful pen, and that never would I see his face in God's sweet world again. Like two doomed ships that pass in the storm, we had crossed each other's way, but we made no sign, we said no word, we had no word to say, for we did not meet in the holy night, but in the shameful day. A prison wall was round us both, two outcast men we were. The world had thrust us from its heart, and to God from out his care, and the iron gin that waits for sin had caught us in its snare. 3. In debtor's yard the stones are hard, and the dripping wall is high, so it was there he took the air beneath the leaden sky, and by each side a warder walked 
looked for fear the man might die or else he sat with those who watched his anguish night and day who watched him when he rose to weep and when he crouched to pray who watched him lest himself should rob their scaffold of its prey the governor was strong upon the regulations act the doctor said that death was but a scientific fact and twice a day the chaplain called and left a little tract and twice a day he smoked his pipe and drank his quart of beer his soul was resolute and held no hiding place for fear he often said that he was glad the hangman's hands were near but why he said so strange a thing no warder dared to ask for he to whom a watcher's doom is given as his task must set a lock upon his lips and make his face a mask or else he might be moved and try to comfort or console and what should human pity do pent up in murderer's hole what word of grace in such a place could help a brother's soul with slouch and swing around the ring we trod the fool's parade we did not care we knew we were the devil's own brigade and shaven head and feet of lead make a merry masquerade we tore the tarry rope to shreds with blunt and bleeding nails we rubbed the doors and scrubbed the floors and cleaned the shining rails and rank by rank we soaped the plank and clattered with the pails we sewed the sacks we broke the stones we turned the dusty drill we banged the tins and bawled the hymns and sweated on the mill but in the heart of every man terror was lying still so still it lay that every day crawled like a weed-clogged wave and we forgot the bitter lot that waits for fool and knave till once as we tramped in from work we passed an open grave with yawning mouth the yellow hole gaped for a living thing the very mud cried out for blood to the thirsty asphalt ring and we knew that ere one dawn grew some prisoner had to swing right in we went with soul intent on death and dread and doom the hangman with his little bag went shuffling through the gloom and each man trembled as he crept into his numbered tomb that night the empty corridors were full of forms of fear and up and down the iron town so feet we could not hear and through the bars that hide the stars white faces seemed to peer he lays one who lies and dreams in a pleasant meadowland the watchers watched him as he slept and could not understand how one could sleep so sweet a sleep with a hangman close at hand but there is no sleep when men must weep who never yet have wept so we the fool the fraud the knave that endless vigil kept and through each brain on hands of pain another's terror crept alas it is a fearful thing to feel another's guilt for right within the sword of sin pierced to its poisoned hilt and as molten lead were the tears we shed for the blood we had not spilt the warders with their shoes of felt crept by each padlocked door and peeped and saw with eyes of awe grey figures on the floor and wondered why men knelt to pray who never prayed before all through the night we knelt and prayed mad mourners of a corpse the troubled plumes of midnight were the plumes upon a hearse and bitter wine upon a sponge was the savour of remorse the grey cock crew the red cock crew but never came the day and crooked shapes of terror crouched in the corners where we lay and each evil sprite that walks by night before us seemed to play they glided past they glided fast like travellers through a mist they mocked the moon in a rigadoon of delicate turn and twist and with formal pace and loathsome grace the phantoms kept their tryst with mop and mow we saw them go slim shadows hand in hand about about in ghostly rout they trod a saraband and the damned grotesques made arabesques like the wind upon the sand 
with the pirouettes of marionettes they tripped on pointed tread but with flutes of fear they filled the ear as their grisly mask they led and loud they sang and long they sang for they sang to wake the dead oh ho they cried the world is wide but fettered limbs go lame and once or twice to throw the dice is a gentlemanly game but he does not win who plays with sin in the secret house of shame no things of air these antics were that frolicked with such glee to men whose lives were held in jives and whose feet might not go free ah wounds of christ they were living things most terrible to see around around they waltzed and wound some wheeled in smirking pairs with the mincing step of a demirep some sidled up the stairs and with subtle sneer and fawning leer each helped us at our prayers the morning wind began to moan but still the night went on through its giant loom the web of gloom crept till each thread was spun and as we prayed we grew afraid of the justice of the sun the moaning wind went wandering round the weeping prison wall till like a wheel of turning steel we felt the minutes crawl o oh, moaning wind what had we done to have such a seneschal at last i saw the shadowed bars like a lattice wrought in lead move right across the whitewashed wall that faced my three-plank bed and i knew that somewhere in the world god's dreadful dawn was red at six o'clock we cleaned our cells at seven all was still but the sow and swing of a mighty wing the prison seemed to fill for the lord of death with icy breath had entered in to kill he did not pass in purple pomp nor ride a moon-white steed three yards of cord and a sliding board are all the gallows need so with rope of shame the herald came to do the secret deed we were as men who through a fen of filthy darkness grope we did not dare to breathe a prayer or to give our anguish scope something was dead in each of us and what was dead was hope for man's grim justice goes its way and will not swerve aside it slays the weak it slays the strong it has a deadly stride with iron heel it slays the strong the monstrous parricide we waited for the stroke of eight each tongue was thick with thirst for the stroke of eight is the stroke of fate that makes a man accursed and fate will use a running noose for the best man and the worst we had no other thing to do save to wait for the sign to come so like things of stone in a valley lone quiet we sat and dumb but each man's heart beat thick and quick like a madman on a drum with sudden shock the prison clock smote on the shivering air and from all the jail rose up a wail of impotent despair like the sound that frightened marshes here from some leper in his lair and as one sees most fearful things in the crystal of a dream we saw the greasy hempen rope hooked to the blackened beam and heard the prayer the hangman's snare strangled into a scream and all the woe that moved him so that he gave that bitter cry and the wild regrets and the bloody sweats none knew so well as i for he who lives more lives than one more deaths than one must die four there is no chapel on the day on which they hang a man the chaplain's heart is far too sick or his face is far too wan or there is that written in his eyes which none should look upon so they kept us close till nigh on noon and then they rang the bell and the warders with their jingling keys opened each listening cell and down the iron stair we tramped each from his separate hell out into god's sweet air we went but not in wonted way for this man's face was white with fear and that man's face was grey 
and I never saw a sad man who looked so wistfully at the day. I never saw a sad man who looked with such a wistful eye upon that little tent of blue we prisoners called the sky, and at every careless cloud that passed in happy freedom by. But there were those amongst us all who walked with downcast head, and knew that, had each got his due, they should have died instead. He had but killed a thing that lived, whilst they had killed the dead. For he who sins a second time wakes a dead soul to pain, and draws it from its spotted shroud, and makes it bleed again, and makes it bleed great gouts of blood, and makes it bleed in vain. Like ape or clown, in monstrous garb, with crooked arrows starred, Silently we went round and round the slippery asphalt yard. Silently we went round and round, and no man spoke a word. Silently we went round and round, and through each hollow mind, The memory of dreadful things rushed like a dreadful wind, And horror stalked before each man. And terror crept behind. The warders strutted up and down, And kept their herd of brutes. Their uniforms were spick and span, And they wore their Sunday suits. But we knew the work they had been at By the quicklime on their boots. For where a grave had opened wide, There was no grave at all, Only a stretch of mud and sand By the hideous prison wall. And a little heap of burning lime That the man should have his pall. For he has a pall, this wretched man, Such as few men can claim. Deep down below a prison yard, Naked for greater shame, He lies with fetters on each foot, Wrapped in a sheet of flame. And all the while the burning lime Eats flesh and bone away, it eats the brittle bone by night, and the soft flesh by day. It eats the flesh and bone by turns, but it eats the heart alway. For three long years they will not sow or root or seedling there. For three long years the unblessed spot will stare I'll be and bear, and look upon the wandering sky with unreproachful stare. They think a murderer's heart would taint each simple seed they sow. It is not true. God's kindly earth is kindlier than men know. And the red rose would but blow more red, the white rose whiter blow. Out of his mouth a red, red rose, out of his heart a white. For who can say by what strange way Christ brings his will to light, Since the barren staff the pilgrim bore Bloomed in the great Pope's sight? But neither milk-white rose nor red May bloom in prison air. The shard, the pebble, and the flint Are what they give us there. For flowers have been known to heal A common man's despair. So never will wine-red rose or white Petal by petal fall On that stretch of mud and sand That lies by the hideous prison wall To tell the men who tramp the yard That God's Son died for all. Yet though the hideous prison wall Still hems him round and round, And a spirit may not walk by night That is with fetters bound, and a spirit may but weep that lies in such unholy ground. He is at peace, this wretched man, at peace, or will be soon. There is no thing to make him mad, nor does terror walk at noon, for the lampless earth in which he lies has neither sun nor moon. They hanged him as a beast is hanged. They did not even toll a requiem that might have brought rest to his startled soul, but hurriedly they took him out and hid him in a hole. They stripped him of his canvas clothes and gave him to the flies. They mocked the swollen purple throat and the stark and staring eyes, and with laughter loud they heaped the shroud in which their convict lies. The chaplain would not kneel to pray by his dishonoured grave, Nor mark it with that blessed cross that Christ for sinners gave, 
because the man was one of those whom Christ came down to save. Yet all is well, he has but passed to life's appointed bourne, and alien tears will fill for him pity's long-broken urn, for his mourners will be outcast men, and outcasts always mourn. 5. I know not whether laws be right or whether laws be wrong. All that we know who lie in jail is that the wall is strong, and that each day is like a year, a year whose days are long. But this I know, that every law that men have made for man, since first man took his brother's life and the sad world began, but straws the wheat and saves the chaff with a most evil fan. This too I know, and wise it were if each could know the same, that every prison that men built is built with bricks of shame, and bound with bars lest Christ should see how men their brothers maim. With bars they blur the gracious moon and blind the goodly sun, and they do well to hide their hell, for in it things are done that son of God nor son of man ever should look upon. The vilest deeds like poison weeds bloom well in prison air. It is only what is good in man that wastes and withers there. Pale anguish keeps the heavy gate, and the warder is despair. For they starve the little frightened child till it weeps both night and day, and they scourge the weak and flog the fool and gibe the old and grey, and some grow mad and all grow bad and none a word may say. Each narrow cell in which we dwell is a foul and dark latrine, and the fetid breath of living death chokes up each grated screen. And all but lust is turned to dust in humanity's machine. The brackish water that we drink creeps with a loathsome slime, And the bitter bread they weigh in scales is full of chalk and lime, And sleep will not lie down, but walks wild-eyed and cries to time. But though lean hunger and green thirst like asp with adder fight, we have little care of prison fare, for what chills and kills outright is that every stone one lifts by day becomes one's heart by night. With midnight always in one's heart and twilight in one's cell, we turn the crank or tear the rope, each in a separate hell, and the silence is more awful far than the sound of a brazen bell. And never a human voice comes near to speak a gentle word, And the eye that watches through the door is pitiless and hard, And by all forgot we rot and rot with soul and body marred. And thus we rust life's iron chain, degraded and alone, And some men curse, and some men weep, and some men make no moan, but God's eternal laws are kind, and break the heart of stone. And every human heart that breaks in prison cell or yard is as that broken box that gave its treasure to the Lord, and filled the unclean leper's house with the scent of costliest nard. Ah, happy day whose hearts can break in peace of pardon win, how else may man make straight his plan and cleanse his soul from sin? How else but through a broken heart may Lord Christ enter in? And he of the swollen purple throat and the stark and staring eyes waits for the holy hands that took the thief to paradise, and a broken and a contrite heart the Lord will not despise. The man in red who reads the law gave him three weeks of life, three little weeks in which to heal his soul of his soul's strife, and cleanse from every blot of blood the hand that held the knife. And with tears of blood he cleansed the hand, the hand that held the steel, for only blood can wipe out blood, and only tears can heal. 
and the crimson stain that was of Cain became Christ's snow-white seal. 6. In Reading Jail by Reading Town there is the pit of shame, and in it lies a wretched man, eaten by teeth of flame. In a burning, winding sheet he lies, and his grave has got no name. And there, till Christ call forth the dead, in silence let him lie. No need to waste the foolish tear, or heave the windy sigh. The man had killed the thing he loved, and so he had to die. And all men kill the thing they love, by all let this be heard, some do it with a bitter look, some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. Le Jardin de Tuilerie from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian. This winter air is keen and cold, and keen and cold this winter sun. Around my chair the children run, like little things of dancing gold. Sometimes about the painted kiosk, the mimic soldiers strut and stride. Sometimes the blue-eyed brigands hide in the bleak tangles of the bosk. And sometimes while the old nurse cons her book, they steal across the square and launch their paper navies where huge triton writhes in greenish bronze. And now in mimic flight they flee, and now they rush a boisterous band, and tiny hand on tiny hand climb up the black and leafless tree. Ah, cruel tree, if I were you, and children climbed me for their sake, though it be well with a copy of A House of Pomegranates, from the poems of Oscar Wilde, by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian. Go, little book, to him who, on a lute with horns of pearl, sang of the white feet of the golden girl, and bid him look into thy pages, it may have The True Knowledge from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Thou knowest all. I seek in vain what lands to till or sow with seed. The land is black with briar and weed, nor cares for falling tears or rain. Thou knowest all. I sit and wait with blinded eyes and hands that fail Till the last lifting of the veil and the first opening of the gate. Thou knowest all. I cannot see. I trust I shall not live in vain. On the recent sale by auction of Keats' love letters, from the poems of Oscar Wilde, by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org, by Lian. These are the letters which Endymion wrote to one he loved in secret and apart, and now the brawlers of the auction mart bargain and bid for each poor blotted note. Ay. For each separate pulse of passion quote the merchant's price. I think they love not art who break the crystal of a poet's heart that small and sickly eyes may glare or gloat. Is it not said?
that many years ago in a far eastern town some soldiers ran with torches through the midnight and began to wrangle for mean raiment and to throw dice for the garments of a wretched man The New Remorse from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Lian The thing was mine, I did not understand, So now is music prisoned in her cave, Save where some ebon desultory wave Frets its restless worlds this meagre strand. And in the withered hollow of this land, hath summer dug herself so deep a grave that hardly can the leaden willow crave one silver blossom from keen winter's hand but who is this who cometh by the shore nay love look up and wonder who is this who cometh in dyed garments from the south it is thy new-found lord and he shall kiss the yet unravished roses of thy mouth The Harlot's House from the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde read for LibriVox.org by Lian. We caught the thread of dancing feet. We loitered down the moonlit street and stopped beneath the Harlot's House. Inside, above the din and fray, we heard the loud musicians play the Trollibus Heres of Strauss like strange mechanical grotesques making fantastic arabesques the shadows raced across the blind we watched the ghostly dancer spin to a sound of horn and violin like black leaves wheeling in the wind like wire-pulled automatons slim silhouetted skeletons went sliding through the slow quadrille then took each other by the hand and danced the stately saraband their laughter echoed thin and shrill sometimes a clockwork puppet pressed a phantom lover to her breast sometimes they seemed to try and sing sometimes a horrible marionette came out and smoked its cigarette upon the steps like a live thing then turning to my love i said the dead are dancing with the dead the dust is whirling with the dust but she she heard the violin and left my side and entered in love passed into the house of lust then suddenly the tune went forth, the dancers wearied of the waltz, the shadows ceased to wheel and whirl. And down the long and silent street, the dawn with silver sound. Under the Balcony from the poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. O oh, beautiful star with the crimson mouth, O oh, moon with the brows of gold, rise up, rise up from the odorous south, and light for my love her way, lest her little feet should stray on the windy hill and the wold. O oh, beautiful star with the crimson mouth, O oh, moon with the brows of gold, O oh, ship that shakes on the desolate sea, O oh, ship with the wet white sail, Put in, put in to the port to me, For my love and I would go To the land where the daffodils blow In the heart of a violet dale. O oh, ship that shakes on the desolate sea, O oh, ship with the wet white sail! O oh, rapturous bird with the low sweet note! O oh, bird that sits on the spray! Sing on, sing on from your soft brown throat! And my love in her little bed Will listen and lift her head From the pillow and come my way. O oh, rapturous bird with the low sweet note! O oh, bird that sits on the spray! 
O oh, blossom that hangs in the tremulous air, O oh, blossom with lips of snow, Come down, come down for my love to wear, You will die on her head in a crown, You will die in a fold of her gown, To her little light heart you will go, O oh, blossom that hangs in the tremulous air, Wasted Days from a Picture Painted by Miss V. T. From the Poems of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne A fair slim boy not made for this world's pain, With hair of gold thick clustering round his ears, And longing eyes half veiled by foolish tears, like bluest water seen through mists of rain, pale cheeks whereon no kiss hath left a stain, red under lip drawn in for fear of love, and white throat whiter than the breast of dove. Alas, alas, if all should be in vain. Behind, wide fields and reapers all a row in heat and labor toiling wearily to no sweet sound of laughter or of lute the sun is shooting wide its crimson glow still the boy dreams nor knows that night is nigh and in the night time no man gathers fruit End of poem. This recording